Hello friends, this is Proxy Maani What Ifs. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie part 1 on what if Naruto was true heir of the Rikid Senen, unlocks the Rinnegan. Here is a quick summary. Naruto leaves for training for 4 years, he unlocks the Rinnegan and strives to become Hokage, on his way back he comes across the Kakuzu and hide in battle against Kakashi and some others. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, I used to go by the name of Naruto Uzumaki instead until I was told of my heritage. All my life I had believed that I had been abandoned by my parents because of what I hold, so you can imagine my surprise when I learned my father was Minato Namikaze the Yandame Hokage. Also known as the Konoha no Kiroi Senko, Konoha's Yellow Flash, the very same man who sealed the Kaiubi no Yoko in my gut. For a long time I was pissed at my gather for the burden being placed on my life, on some level I feel like he trusted me with the task of keeping the Kaiubi in control, believing I could tame its power. But there are some times where I wish I had never entrusted with the task. My mother was Yuzumaki Kashina, Red Death of Konoha, from Yuzushi Agakur no Sato, village hidden among the whirling tides. They say she was beautiful, a redhead with a tomboyish attitude similar to how I used to be, and she was also a Kinoichi of the Whirlpool country, which was destroyed at the beginning of the Third Great Shinobi War. My mother was the only known survivor as there was no proof anyone else had survived. The only problem is that she is assumed to be dead, meaning she either abandoned me at the hands of the village or she passed on but went missing. I had learned about my heritage after I brought back Tsune to be Hokage, Jiraiya had decided it was time that I should know who I really was, I was so happy to find out I actually belonged to people that loved me and didn't abandon me like I had thought all these years. I had then learned I had a special bloodline called the Omni Elemental, this allows me to use all elements as if they were my primary element and with me being a Jutsu lover, I couldn't wait to learn all the possible Jutsu out there and even create some along the way. This bloodline was apparently from the Namika's side of the family, the Yuzumaki side was a mystery as my mother was a bit secretive about her past, as it was a painful issue to her when speaking to others about it. I am now 17 years of age, 4 years ago I was banished from my home village Konohagakur no Sato, village hidden in the leaves, all because of the foolish council thinking they know what's good for their village. I was banished for the sole reason of not completing a mission, a mission I wasn't even the leader of, the mission where I had to bring my ex-teammate, Sasuke Chiha back to the village, all because he left in order to gain more power, of course the council in their infinite wisdom decided that he was too valuable to let to go and sent, Shikamaru Nara. Tiba Inuzuka and his partner Akamaru Chaji Akamichi and Niji Hayuga. All of us pursued Sasuke through the forest because he had teamed up with the Sound 4, eventually the group broke as they started to have one-on-one -on -one fights with the Sound 4 and then their fifth member, Kimimuro. Chaoji and Niji both ended up near death after defeating their opponents, Jerem and Kidmeru. Hiba and Akamaru were nearly killed by Seiken and Yukin, but were saved by the timely intervention of Kankerm. This situation was repeated with Shikamaru being saved by Tamari from Teaya. I then engaged Kimimuro in battle for a while, but was not a match for him. Rock Lee saved him in order for me to continue pursuing Sasuke. Ara, in turn, saved Rock Lee, and both were then saved by Kimimuro succumbing to disease. When I faced off with Sasuke the battle ended in Sasuke's favor, but he chose not kill me. In the end, the mission was a failure, as Sasuke successfully joined up with Orochimaru. I was so weak back then I felt ashamed. After that mission I made the decision that I and he were enemies, the next time I saw him, only one of us would walk away. I now have many enemies despite being at the young age of 17, the Akatsuki who are after me for the power of the Kaiubi for their own uses, Orochimaru, who most likely wants the Kaiubi's power himself, but honestly, I just want to kill him for killing the Sandame Hokage, the only person to ever be nice to be as a kid and my ex-teammate Ichiha Sasuke. Not long after being released from the hospital I was called up to the council chambers that resided within the Hokage Tower, I still remember everything, even to this day. Flashback. Hokage Tower. Council Chamber. As Naruto entered the council chamber, he could feel the tension that was in the air, which seemed to suffocate the room, taking a good look around he was able to see all those that were present. At the top in the center was Shimura Danzo, he was a manipulative man who would use other people and sacrifice them if it meant getting what he wanted, there were also rumors that he had worked with Orochimaru on occasion, but it was never proven, just like all rumors on the man. The two other elders either side of Danzo were Yudatane Kaharu and Mitakado Hamura, ex-teammates of Hiruzen Sirotobi, the Sandame Hokage. Yudatane Kaharu holds the belief that the group is more important than any of its individual members. Because of this, she always tries to do what she thinks is the best for Konoha, even if it goes against the Hokage's or her opinion. She is also quite demure, but does not let this stop her from voicing her opinion. 
In fact, despite this, Kaharu is one of the few people able to put the fifth Hokage in her place when she oversteps her authority. Like Hamura, she is more militant than the Hokage she served under have been and sometimes leans more to Danzo's point of view. Hamura is somewhat of an authoritarian, but he always has the village's best interests in mind. Like Kaharu, he is more militant than the Hokage he served under have been and sometimes leans more towards Danzo's point of view. The others in the council were all the clan heads of the Haiuga, Inuzuka, Aburam, Akamichi, Nara, and Yamanaka. Haiuga Hiashi was a strange person sometimes he neither hated nor liked Naruto, but once he defeated Niji, he started to admire the boy as he defied fate as one might say. He was however Namaka's Minato's best friend, but because of the laws placed around Naruto he was unable to anything for the boy, leaving him to the wolves, one might say. And Yuzuka Tsum had always liked Naruto even before she knew who he was, she had liked him because his personality was more like hers in every sense of the word, the fact that he had a fear look about him didn't do any justice either. She was one of Yuzumaki Kashina's closest friend, she had tried to adopt the boy into her clan, knowing he would be able to learn their clan techniques, as he is more of an animal, similar to all Inuzukas. Aburam Shibi had liked Naruto as he could relate with the boy, considering that his clan held bugs within their bodies, much like Naruto holding in the Kaiubi, they weren't stupid to relate the two, as they were two separate beings. Shibi had actually gained some sense of respect for the Namikas, as he had been able to fight through all the insults, glares, etc., when any lesser man would cave. The Inoshikacho trio had also always respected and liked the boy, as they were probably the smartest clans out there, they could easily tell that the boy was just the boy. They had also liked Naruto for the simple fact their children admired him the more he grew up which actually made them train harder than ever. They were all now sitting in their clan seats along with Tsunade in the Hokage seat. On the other side of the room sat the Jonins and Chunins that were Naruto's friends and senseis as they had been told to come. Anzo looking as Naruto with narrowed eyes spoke up. Do you know the reason for why you've been called? He asked the confused blonde-haired boy who blinked at him. Erm um, not really, I was just told I had to come here. Naruto explained with a raised eyebrow as if asking why he was here. Anzo for a moment looked smug for some reason. We, of the council have viewed everything that had happened on the latest mission and given certain circumstances, we have voted to have you exiled from Kanahagakur, indefinitely. He said with conviction making almost every shinobi snap their heads in his direction in shock. What? Tsunade shouted in outrage. Naruto Uzumaki failed to bring back Sasuke Chiha and allowed him to go to Itagakur with Orochimaru, for that action he must be banished. Kaharu spoke up while looking at Naruto with hate through her squinted eyes. He also used his tenant's power while fighting the Achiha, putting his life in danger along with anyone else who may come in contact with a boy in the future, Naruto Uzumaki is a ticking time bomb ready to explode. Hamura explained. We wanted to execute him. The incident at the Valley of the End was not the only time that demonic chakra has been sensed. It was reported on his first mission out of the village, as well as during the Chunin exams and after them when Sunagakur was invading. We gave him a chance, but enough is enough. However, we've seen how you favor the boy, so decided on exiling him instead. Anzo said directing his attention to the angered Tsunade, Naruto however kept his head lowered. Luckily all of Naruto's friends already knew of the Kaiubi and didn't see a problem with the blonde-haired boy, so it wasn't so much as a secret anymore. His seal has not been damaged, it most certainly isn't breaking Tsunade snapped. Have you no faith in the Yandame's sacrifice? The Yandame, gifted as he was, was not infallible. And. Dure has been keeping an eye on the boy. He's a seal master in his own right. So you honestly think that he wouldn't notice if anything was wrong with it? Tsunade was absolutely livid. How dare they? Just who do they think they're dealing with? The seal that the Yandame crafted for the boy was one of his own design. It's one of a kind, and only the Yandame knew how it worked properly. Jiraiya is not qualified to make decisions in the boy. And you are? Tsunade knew that she had to end this. The mutterings of the council, particularly the civilian half it wasn't comforting. She opened her mouth to speak, but Kaharu cut her off. So you say that the seal isn't breaking? Well then, what excuse has Yuzumaki got for using the demonic chakra? If what you're saying is correct, then the fact that he can call up the demon's chakra himself is something that's even more troubling. At least the Achiha's seal warrants an excuse for his behavior. That little how dare she. Tsunade was struggling to keep her temper. Before anyone could speak they heard chuckling, turning to the owner of her saw Naruto with his head down while chuckling, but not a humorous chuckle, but a hollow chuckle. You know he muttered getting everyone's attention. I was wondering how long it would take the council to pull this one, treating me as the scapegoat, all because you old bag of bones can't even shit right without help, so what do you do? Pick the usual punching bag to place all blame on because of your incompetence. He spoke with such coldness that many actually shivered from it, while the elders grew outraged. 
Listen here boy Danzo started only for a kunai to go flying past his head, cutting some hair off the side of his head, looking ahead, he saw Naruto with his arm outstretched and a cold look in his eyes. No you listen to me. He practically commanded, everyone else looked at Naruto in shock at the way he was acting. You say I'm dangerous because I have access to the Kaiubi power, and I'll use it to practically kill and destroy. If that is the case, then why is this village still standing? He asked rhetorically while looking around. I have every reason to say fuck it and release Kaiubi and reduce the village to nothing, but I don't because I actually have people who see me for me and not some weapon, monster, abomination that should be destroyed. Everything I have ever done is for their safety, I have put my life on the line protecting everyone who is precious to me, and I'm the one on trial here, being told I am a ticking time bomb right now, you have no idea how close you are. He spoke as his flashed red for a second, then a sword of violet before going blue which startled everyone there. You are a danger to everyone here, it is only a matter of time before your presence brings destruction to Kanoha. Kaharu spoke through gritted teeth, anger clearly displayed on her face. All of a sudden everything seemed to click in Naruto's mind before a small smile played out on his face. I know the real reason you're all doing this he said with a smug tone making the elders and the civilian council stiffen. Your fear for those outside the village is amazing you're not worried about the people of this village, you're worried about yourselves, worried that I have a group of s rank missing nin after me for the power of Kaiubi, and you know they will come for me, just like Itachi Ichiha and Kisum Hashigaki did recently am I right? He asked with an arched brow. What? Su asked confused not knowing who this group was. The Akatsuki. Jiraiya spoke up coming from out of the shadows, having listened to everything and had a scowl on his face. Are a group of S rank missing nin after the Biju's power for God only knows what and what Naruto is getting at, is that the elders and civilian council want to banish him to protect themselves. Everyone who had heard were gobsmacked that Naruto was in such danger, and yet the village were throwing him away to save themselves. That is irrelevant as of now right now we will place a vote whether or not Naruto Uzumaki will be banished or not. Danzo spoke up drawing all attention back to himself. All four. He asked raising his own hand up, along with the advisors and civilian council, which was actually the majority of the council, now that clans have become empty in the village. And against. He spoke with a smug tone already knowing the result is Tsunade, and the clans held their hands up with defeated looks, but nevertheless showing Naruto their support. Naruto Uzumaki, you will be out of this village within 24 hours or you will execute it. You can't do this. Tsunade. Naruto said stopping Tsunade in her tracks after using her name instead of Bachan, looking up at him, she saw Naruto who had a smile on his face despite what was happening. Don't worry, this is the best for everyone, and you know it deep down he said with a sigh seeing her look down, turning to Danzo he got a smirk on his face. Oh and when you record this down, I want my full name there Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, son of Minato Namikas and Kishina Uzumaki so, when you people find yourself in trouble with your enemies, or if Akatsuki decide to attack anyway don't, you dare ask for my help, because as far as I'm concerned this village can burn to the ground. He said with crimson eyes staring at the council before leaving the council chambers, leaving many people stunned at what they had just been told. He's the son of Sakura spoke not able to finish the sentence. Yeah, Kakashi answered with a sad sigh at failing his sensei son. And this village has just banished him Niji whispered in shock. The elders, civilian and shinobi sides of the council weren't faring much better, but Inoichi spoke what everyone was thinking. Dear God, what have we done? Flashback end. Obviously I wouldn't let the village burn just because of my anger at the elders, but for the first time in my life I just wanted them to feel fear, believing that I wouldn't help them, the only reason I ever would is because of Tsunade and Jiraiya, as well as my precious people. After that I had gone home to pack up all of my stuff, along with scrolls on my bloodline and heritage, before I could leave however, Jiraiya had come to my apartment to give me a scroll from my father that he told me to open when I wanted to get really strong, and Tsunade soon came around with a couple scrolls on medical jutsu, knowing that I would need to be able to heal myself despite the Kaiubi. Healing Abilities. After getting the biggest hug I ever thought possible from Tsunade I had said goodbye to the two senin, I left my apartment, and eventually the village to live my life only Kami knows where. After reading up more about my bloodline I soon came to the point where it is possible to combine elements to create a sub-element so that I can recreate Mokuten, Heimten, and many more, with this I just knew it would help me to become extremely strong. In the first few months I eventually came into a life and death situation when all of a sudden I blacked out, when I had woken up I felt stronger, stronger than I ever could feel, as I looked around I had noticed the air looked like an explosion rocked the place, until I saw a puddle where I noticed my eyes had turned a grayish purple iris and sclera with circular ripples in it. After some investigating I learned that the eyes were a bloodline, a dejutsu that was unable to shut off like the Sharingan and Byakugan. 
I soon learned that people viewed it as nothing but a myth, that the only person to have had the eyes was the Rickham Senan, knowing that it made me feel special for the first time in my life. It was also with this Dejutsu that I seemed to gain knowledge in my dreams about Jutsu only for the Rinnegan, as it was called, and that the reason for my omni-elemental bloodline was because the Namakazes were derived from the Rikid Msenin, just like the Achiha and Senju, however the family tree had been lost for generations. It wasn't until about five months later where I was on the way to Kumagakur to train more in my Raten element and perhaps even my Rantan element which I had read up on and learned that holders of the particular sub-element reside in Kumo, as well as two fellow Jinchuriki, of course I gained this information through some spies had recruited. This was also the same time I met my first Kumo shinobi, who would become friends with me as well as allies, and a Wagakur shinobi, who would become my enemy, father-like son. It was also the day that something amazing happened. Flashback outskirts of Kumagakur. Forest. Jumping through the trees Naruto was on his way towards Kumo in order to get his Raten element mastered, despite the fact that he is already well versed in that element, but it wouldn't hurt to go to the place that holds the most knowledge of the element to learn more. Just as he was about to jump towards another tree he could hear the sounds of battle not far, and being the person he is, just had to know what was going on, so in that case, he jumped towards where the battle was. As he got close he was able to pick out four Kumo Shinobi three females, two of them blondes, while one had red brownish hair and a male who had white spiky hair. The cross from them were twenty Iwa Shinobi who had lecherous grins on their faces at seeing the three beautiful women, something he didn't like to see, but what he could tell is that the Kumo Shinobi were a bit worn out while it was clear a battle had been fought given the damage of the area and dead bodies of Iwa Nin. Am, this is bad Yujido, can't you use the Nibis Chakra? The one with red brownish hair spoke to the young woman named Yujido. Yujido, now that he could see her clearly was a beautiful woman, she purple slit eyes, which by the way it sounded, was because of her demon, the Nibi no Bakaneko. Well, at least I found a fellow Jinchuriki at last. He also noted she wore what looked like the traditional Kumo Shinobi wear, as well as a headband on her forehead. And I'm too exhausted to be access her chakra right now Kari. She replied to the now named Kari. Harry was also a beautiful woman in a tomboyish sort of way, she was also dark-skinned, while wearing a standard Kinoichi Kumo Shinobi attire with her headband in the form of a bandana, she also had a sword strapped to her back. She had a long mane of red hair with brown underneath flowing down her back, and she had some of the most beautiful topaz eyes. This is very bad, I knew I should have been nicer to the rakage, but no, I had to screw up, and now he sent us to our deaths, I honestly didn't think he would be that upset that I hadn't eaten my cereal. The only male spoke who was crouched down low, also wearing standard Kumo attire with his headband tied around his forehead. He had short spiky white hair with black eyes and sucking on a lollipop, he like Kerry, also wore a sword strapped to his back. Shut up Amoy, he didn't send us to our deaths right Samui. Kerry asked the blonde woman uncertainty who blonde short haired woman with a massive chest, stood lazily with one hand on her back as if leaning on it. She also wore similar clothing to Kerry with a mesh shirt and a sword in her hand. Right she said shortly. One of the Iwa Nin started walking forward. Why don't you ladies just come peacefully and we'll show you our appreciation. He said with a leer while his companions laughed harshly making the woman feel a trickle of fear. You wish. Yujito said with a hiss. Oh. And who's gonna stop us from taking our prize. He said as his friends started moving towards the girls and Amoy. Naruto deciding enough was enough took action jumping high up, he started swirling chakra in his right hand before diving down at the Iwa Nin. Me. Rasengan. Coming down fast, he smashed the Rasengan down on an Iwan in, while catching a couple more in the blast radius. Standing up from his crouched position Naruto looked down to see the dead body of the shinobi and kicked him away, while looking around him to see he had been circled by the shinobi, while the Kumo shinobi stood off to the side in shock at seeing what looked like a mini Yandame Hokage. Who the hell are you? A gruff Iwan in demanded. Wait a minute another spoke almost hesitantly. I know you, you're Naruto Uzumaki Namikaz aren't you, the son of the Yandame Hokage you were banished from Konoha, all because you held the Kaiubi huh? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, we can finally have our revenge, while taking the Kaiubi for ourselves. He spoke almost in glee while everyone stood stock still at the information. Kumo Shinobi. The Kumo Nin were in no better shape as their jaws were hanging open at the information. Namikaz Amoy mumbled. Son of the Yandame Hokage Samui almost spluttered out. Kaiubi? Yujito asked herself in shock. That's right kitten, I could feel his presence anywhere, there's no doubt about it, and he's the container of the Kaiubi. The Nibi spoke in her mind. Why would Kano have banished their Jinchuriki? Fear kitten fear make people do a lot of stupid stuff, but if I'm right from what I can feel, banishing this young man was their biggest mistake ever. Why? I haven't felt power like him since the Rikid Msenin existed. 
Unaware of Yujido's internal conversation, Kerry had only one word that summed everything up. Whoa. But Naruto. Naruto narrowed his rippled eyes at the eye went in, while gathering chakra around him ready for anything. Yes, but the question is, how the hell do you know that? The eye went in just chuckled. Information about you is being passed around pretty easily, it's as if someone's out to get your kid, don't blame them, having the Kaiubi, being the son of one the strongest shinobi, and then there are your eyes the Rinnegan, seems like someone knows more about you than you think. Naruto's eyes suddenly turned icy cold, on his short journey he has had to kill many bandits and shinobi alike, at first he hated it, but eventually got used to it, understanding that he had no choice, this was his life now, and either way, he would have to kill eventually. Over time he had learned to go into a sort of zone where he would be a monster in battle. All of a sudden all the Iwanin pulled out kunai and shuriken, intending on turning him into a pin cousin, much to the kumonin's horror. All at once every single weapon was thrown at Naruto who simply closed his eyes, racing his arms up either side of him, his eyes snapped open as he called out. Shinra Tensei. To everyone's shock and incredible force exploded from out of Naruto, blowing all weapons away at a much faster speed, while creating a small crater underneath him. Don't underestimate me or you'll pay for it. He exclaimed as he flipped through hand seals before calling out. Shimton. Shuriken Ranbu. Light started to shimmer around Naruto as shurikens started to form out of crystals before spinning around him like a tornado, thrusting his right arm out in front of him, he sent his shurikens soaring for the five Iwanin who were frozen in the spot, causing them to be shredded from the crystal shurikens that tore through the skin with such force that they slammed them into the surrounding trees. Sensing movement from his right he spun around while flipping a kunai out of his sleeve, blocking a kunai in the hands of one of the nin, pushing against it, he caused a nin to stumble back before he used his free hand to knock his opponent's kunai out of hand, before thrusting his own into his heart and kicking the body away with his right foot and catching the kunai that he knocked away. Spinning around he threw his two kunai at two Iwa nin, who came at him, hitting them in the foreheads, effectively killing them. Eight down, man, these guys are weak, if I didn't know any better, I'd say they were high gen and low chunin. Hearing a noise that sounded like a swoosh he spun around only to came face to face with the end of a katana, when all of a sudden he seemed to black out. Mindscape. Opening up his eyes he soon realized he wasn't in the same forest anymore as he looked around he could only see what looked like a tropical forest, only when he looked up all he could see was red, as if the sky was on fire, which was strange since he couldn't feel any heat whatsoever. I was wondering when you would come. A voice spoke up which sounded almost regal. Turning around he came upon the sight of what looked like a man dressed in a samurai outfit, the only strange thing is that the outfit was made out of fire, while well, bits of it were metal, such as the kneecaps, elbow pad, shoulder pads, feet and gloves. The outfit gave off a powerful feel, while also feeling like he should welcome it with open arms like it's a part of him. Who are you? There's Anpakudo. The figure spoke simply as if no explanations were needed. Zanpakudo. What's that? Naruto confused. The figure chuckled behind its helmet. As Anpakudo is a manifestation of a person's soul, it is extremely rare for a human to ever obtain as Anpakudo, but that is irrelevant right now seeing as you have one. Anyways Anpakudos are unique to their owner, as the swords are both reflections of their owner's soul and power, and sentient beings unto themselves, hence me. The physical form of as Anpakudo is a sword, this sword will be a representation of your soul, and will be formed to be one with you in a way. So you're saying that you are a sword? And I'm the only one who can use you? He asked. Yes, there are a few things first however, every Zanpakudo has its own unique name, as Zanpakudo can determine whether or not its wielder is worthy of its power, and also each Zanpakudo have their own true form, this isn't mine at the moment, you could say this is my first form in a way. Okay, I understand more so you say each has its own name, what's yours? Naruto asked with a raised brow. Well, normally people don't hear their Zanpakudo's name straight away, but I got a feeling you aren't like the others very well, my name is Rikyun Jaka. As soon as the name was spoken, Naruto could literally feel the power that came just from the name. Rikyun Jaka huh? I like it. Naruto spoke with a grin. Rikyun Jakalso chuckled. All Zanpakudo are different as they each have their own ability, mine is the ability to control all fire, big or small. There are also different levels when it comes to Zanpakudo which are, sealed, this is the base form of the Zanpakudo, like so opening his hand fire swirled around it before settling into his palm and stretching out and eventually forming a sword. The sword was one of the most amazing things he had ever seen, it must have been at least 5 feet long, standard katana with a dark purple handle, and a circular handguard, with what looked like a phoenix engraved around the edge. The scabbard was a royal purple with a red tassel that hung off the top just underneath the guard. This is the sealed form, the next form is called Shikai, initial release, the second form available to his Anpakudo. To activate it, the wielder needs to learn the name of their Zanpakudo. 
This is not as easy as simply picking a name, as the living spirit of the Zanpakuto already has its own name. Therefore, the wielder must be able to communicate and harmonize with their Zanpakuto effectively, which requires being able to speak to the spirit within its world, very much like we are now. However it is the third form, Bankai that is most difficult to acquire, one must be able to materialize and subjugate their Zanpakuto spirit. Materialization means the opposite of getting dragged into the Zanpakuto's inner world. Instead the wielder needs to summon the Zanpakuto spirit into the physical world. It usually takes 10 years or more to achieve, plus the experience needed to master it. By achieving this, the power can increase tenfold, however even with the usual time, I have faith in your ability. How come I have this power though? Naruto asked with a raised brow. Ah that is a good question my boy well first off what do you know about the Shinigami? Rikin Jaka inquired. They are just that it was the one to put Kaiubi inside of me. Correct. Rikin Jaka said with a nod. But that's not all, the Shinigami goes around the world searching for pure souls, like you, to do his work for him in a way by giving them powers, as Anpakuto for instance is a tool of the Shinigami. So you're saying I'm part Shinigami? Naruto asked in shock. In way yes I am, but more of the fact you have been touched by it and given a gift. Rikin Jaka explained. Well then, I guess I should put on my resume, Shinobi Jinchiriki Shinigami under job huh? Naruto said with a chuckle. Haha, you must be careful though, with having the Kaiubi within you, it may corrupt the Shinigami powers. But be warned also that there will be people out there with Zanpakutos, they may not all be good either. Naruto's mouth was practically through the floor with the information provided and couldn't help but feel giddy. Awesome, so how do I use you, or earn work with you, is that's the right way I'm not used to this sort of thing. Rikin Jaka just laughed. It's okay my boy, in time you will learn as we grow together, but for now I will give you the knowledge you will need to use me. Simply touch the Zanpakuto within my hand, and all information needed will be given. He said holding out his hand, Naruto without hesitation, grasped the scabbard part when a rush of feelings flew into him, and power of the likes he had never felt before, enveloped him in its pure energy, while information flew to his brain. Outside world. Naruto suddenly felt like he had awoken from a dream until the world came into focus just as a katana was about to strike his head, bringing his arm to block the hit he didn't expect to find a katana in his hand, bringing it up quickly, he blocked his opponent's katana and pushed him off sending him back. Looking down at the blade, everything that had happened moments earlier suddenly came back to him, causing a grin to form on his face. Putting the sword up in front of him so it was horizontal, he grasped the scabbard with his left arm tightly as he started pulling on the handle. All around him the temperature started to go up causing everyone to back away from him cautiously, as the grass beneath his feet started to catch fire, while a red haze covered his body. Kumo team? Is the Kaiubi? Kari asked Yujito. No, this is something else. She replied while shaking her head. Where the hell did that sword come from? Amoy asked not expecting an answer. Samui eyed Naruto with calculative eyes. Who is this boy, everything seems like some fairy tale, as soon as this over, I want answers with Naruto. Naruto's eyes snapped open as his Rinnegan seemed to glow, pulling out the sword all the way he called out. Banch Miss I Cajun Tenace, Rikjin Jaka. What came next was something no one would ever forgot, fire engulfed the katana with such unnatural heat that the surroundings started to catch fire just from the intensity, the fire from around the katana grew and enveloped Naruto himself, who seemed to be in a state of peacefulness, as the fire shot up into the sky, turning the once blue sky, red. And just like that the all the fire that surrounded Naruto vanished, only enveloped the katana, handle included as well as Naruto's right arm. Placing the scabbard in his belt he brought Rikin Jack in front of him and swung ahead, causing a wave of intense heat to spew forth enveloping ten Iwan in, unfortunately they didn't have time to scream as the heat turned them to dust, incinerating them. Turning around he jabbed forward stabbing an Iwan in trying to sneak up on him, fire exploded from the katana wrapping around the enemy as his screams pierced the air before he was burned to a crisp before copying the same thing with the last remaining nin. Sighing in relief Naruto placed the katana back in its scabbard which dispelled the flames before he turned to see four stunned Kumo nin. I don't know about you, but I could really do with getting to Kumo right about now. Flashback end. After that they took me to the wreckage where explained everything that had happened to me to him ever since I was banished, as well as the Zanpakuto. I was still in shock that I was part Shinigami, but couldn't wait until I found others like me. I soon learned a lot of techniques from my Zanpakuto which are called Hadn, which are the destructive spells, my favorite, and back in the more defensive spells, very helpful, they were classed as Kido, which is Demon Way. After the Rakage found out who I was he decided that he would help train me which made the four Kumo Shinobi to look on in shock, which I had seen too many times lately. When I asked why, he simply told me that when I became a legend, that to mention he had trained me, which I had to admit, wasn't a bad deal. 
So from that day on, I learned from the Reikage and sometimes his brother who called himself Killer B, the Hachibi no Kaijik Jinshiriki. They taught me a lot about Raten to the point where I could use it from any part of my body like it was nothing. I also learned some Rantan, not a lot, but enough to get me by. I stayed there for six months, integrating with their culture and getting to know everybody, I started seeing the Reikage and Killer B as two crazy older brothers, while I became closer to Yujito, Samui and Kerry, I knew they were trying for my affection, but at the time I was unable to give it to them. Killer B had told me about an island where he learned to control the Hachibi's chakra and offered to take me, despite how much I felt I needed to, I knew I couldn't at the time, so I told him I would when I was ready, seeing as I felt I was nowhere near strong enough yet. When I eventually had to leave I said goodbye to everyone, except for the three girls, nope, but I gave them each one hell of a kiss that they would remember for a while. My next destination was Kurigakur to learn about Suotan Jutsu, seeing as that is where they specialize in that element. Well there I had met Mei Terumi the sexy, yet commanding Mizukij, and had found she was quite flirtatious with me, something I didn't mind considering her beauty. However despite how much I wanted to I had told her nothing could happen yet, while she was disappointed she understood clearly, that didn't stop her from leaving me with something to remember. Soon after that I ended up in Sunagakur where I followed up on feud manipulation, since I knew all masters of the elements hailed from the great village. I progressed well in the art thanks to Gara and Tamari, who had felt like they owed the blonde young man for saving Gara from the darkness. At some point during the third year of my banishment, I finally opened the scroll Jureya had given me before I left, and what do I find within it? The entire Icha Icha Collector's Edition as well as something else my father left behind, Horatian no Jutsu, the very thing that made my father who he was, was now all mine. I also started learning from Tsunade's medical scrolls and had to admit they helped. I soon found my partner in crime, as well as one of my lovers, instead of being in a relationship, we were what you could say friends with benefits, something we both were okay with considering our life at that moment. This person was the beautiful Kagura Enkai. Her emerald eyes and crimson hair always seemed to sway in mischief. She wore a black battle kimono that was slightly altered. It was altered in a way that it was very revealing. Yet to underestimate her would be a great disadvantage. She was carrying in her hand a wicked-looking demon scythe, Bini Akatakiyami, Crimson Moonless Dawn, the scythe had a bone-like handle and black up to five feet. But the flat metal base for it to stand, at the top of the scythe where the blade is connected, there is what looks like an emblem of a silver skull with ruby red eyes. Whereas the curved blade that is connected is black with red along the edges, making it looks like blood. The scythe to my shock was actually as Anpakudo, the first other person have met who was part Shinigami, apparently hers Anpakudo had explained it all to her. It seemed for some reason it was always in its shikai form, Rick and Jaka had told me that it was either because it was too powerful or she didn't have enough control, or maybe both, the advantage was that it never got in the way unlike mine, which would make me walk around with a sword on fire 24-7. When she uses her Zanpakudo, it tends to increase her battle lust, which doesn't concern Kagura at all since she loves battle. With Bini Akatakiyami, Kagura can unleash some destructive techniques that could possibly rival me, her techniques though tend to relate with the moon. Her expertise with her Zanpakudo had earned her the name Shijauhi Kaiho, Scarlet Witch, because of her techniques and her crazy lust for battle. On the fourth year of by banishment, I had learned that Gara had been kidnapped by Akatsuki, but eventually rescued and brought back to life thanks to Kanoha. I couldn't believe I didn't even know he had been kidnapped until it was way too late, I felt like the worst friend. What I did know was that if Kanoha hadn't been able to save him then Akatsuki would be wiped off the map. It was also during the fourth year that I was traveling past Omegakur when I was confronted by an Akatsuki member, however this one was different, and the fact that she was female was a big starter as everyone I had met or known about were male. Her name was Conan, she was a truly beautiful woman who held up a cold expression to hide her true feelings, but against someone who had led a harsh life, I could easily see it through her eyes, the pain, loss, hurt and regret. We had fraud obviously, I kept my eyes hidden so that no Akatsuki member would know about them should they know of them, which would make them my trump card so to speak. I eventually beat her and spared her. Flashback. Conan and Naruto stood away from each other, both bloody and battered, Naruto clothes were torn, and he had cuts all over the place, thanks to Conan's paper attacks, which honestly were a bitch. Conan wasn't much better she was burned, soggy and frazzled, some of her Akatsuki cloak had been burnt off almost revealing. It was at that point that Conan dropped to her knees admitting defeat, admitting being weak to beat her opponent. Naruto seeing he won turned away and started walking confusing Conan. Why aren't you going to kill me? She asked confused. Naruto looked back at her and had trouble keeping the blush down at how beautiful she seemed as the sunlight broke through the clouds. I see no reason to kill you. He said as she looked at him in disbelief. But I'm your enemy. She exclaimed showing emotion for the first time in a while. You know what pain really is I can see it in your eyes. 
he said as if it was the simplest thing. What would you know of pain? She asked with an edge to her voice. Naruto walked over to her and knelt by her. Because I am the Kaiubi Jinchiriki. He said shocking her, she didn't know he was a Jinchiriki just that he was trespassing in aim and he had to be dealt with. We Jinchiriki are the epitome of pain, agony, loneliness we feel it all, and what's worse is we're treated like nothing but scum or being made into tools for other people's own selfish needs and your leader is nothing more than one of those pathetic delusional fools. He said in a harsh tone that surprised her. You don't anything about him. She said sharply trying to defend the man who had been with her always. Really you mean I don't know who your oh so great leader is, Nagato or is it Yuhiko? He asked nonchalant causing Conan's eyes to widen. How do you know who he is? She questioned harshly. Naruto smirked he was getting to her. I have my ways, I heard all about you, Nagato and Yuhiko, at first when I saw your blue hair I thought nothing of it, but when you use paper for Yujutsu it confirmed my suspicions, you are alive, unlike what the rumors say. Conan's brain was racing, she didn't think that this meeting would turn out like this, she finds out he's a Jinchiriki, then he know about the three of them, and then Nagato, now she finds out he is Jiraiya sensei's pupil as well. Maybe just maybe he can save me. What do you want to do with your life? He asked startling her from her thoughts. What do you mean? She asked confused. I mean do you want to live your life with a man who only sees people as tools to help with his grander plans, or do you want to be free? Naruto asked causing her to look down. I don't know anymore. She said as she broke down in front of Naruto crying for everything she had lost before, how her whole life had been a waste of time serving her childhood friend who would use her, as long as it reached his goals. Naruto seeing a broken down woman hugged her bringing his arms around her midsection while she on reflex put her arms around the man neck and cried into his shoulder. You can leave with me. He suggested startling her not expecting that. I can't, he would find me and kill me, it would be too dangerous she said, as much as she wanted to go with a man that had made her see reality. Naruto shook his head and lowered the glasses he wore to cover his eyes, revealing his own Rinnegan, which made her wide-eyed. I wouldn't let him I promise. He said with a grin which caused a tint of pink to appear on her pale skin. How do you have those eyes? She asked confused as she thought no one else would get them. Naruto sighed and massaged his temple. Honestly no idea one minute I was near death and woke up in an empty battlefield with these eyes, I will protect anyone precious to me and, if you come with me, that means you too. He admitted as he wanted her to come with him to live a more peaceful life than as a tool. Conan was stuck she could leave Akatsuki and live the life she had always wanted, or she can stay and be a tool to be used and thrown away at a later date. Conan however was too afraid. I can't. She said solemnly which Naruto nodded his head at. I understand. He said as he stood up and started to walk away which incidentally caused Conan to panic, realizing she may lose her chance at happiness. Wait. She shouted as she ran up to him and hugged him from behind. What if I be your spy I could tell you everything that is going on and what's what and when the time is right I can go with you. She pleaded, she did not want to lose this chance. Naruto pondered that thought but shook his head crushing her hopes. It's too dangerous for that, if he suspects you of doing anything against you, he would kill you he said starting to walk forward, but she kept a grip on him. Conan, if you do this you will be putting your life on the line, you would never be safe. I don't care, I've been in these types of situations before, in a way I want to save him, but I know that won't be possible, you're the only one to ever be nice to me like this and see through my exterior, you're the only one to take notice of how I feel. Please give me this chance, let me prove I can do this for you, I know you can't easily trust me for this, but if I help you take him down I can free aim as well, I can become the leader and make an alliance with whatever village you will be with. She never wanted something so much before, and given this opportunity she had to make it work somehow, in some strange way she felt an attraction to Naruto, as he reminded her of Yuhiko sort of, someone who would go out of their way to help people no matter who they were. Naruto seemed to think it over, while she would be valuable at getting information about Akatsuki, he didn't want to put her in that position that can be so dangerous. Fine. He said turning around and saw she had a small smile on her face. But you have to be careful I will come back for you eventually one way or the other. He informed his new spy getting an affirmative nod. But that she told him everything, how the three orphans were betrayed by Hanzo as him and Danzo struck a deal to kill the three where only Yahiko died, causing Nagato to turn on his path to peace, which was in the wrong direction as he thought so. She also told him how Nagato had taken up to using six bodies besides him to use the Rinnegan abilities separately, basically she told him everything. Then flashback. Ever since that day we had met up on occasion where we would share information about many things, it was one of these times we fell for each other, at one of the meetings we ended up in a makeout session on a field crowded by trees, I don't know how it happened, but I didn't complain. 
We started to open up a lot more as well, she told me everything about herself along with me doing the same, we eventually became lovers, at first I wasn't so sure about it, but after talking about how I needed to reform my clans as I was the last one we decided to take the next step. It wasn't long after that I had finally learned to Horatian, once I did however I met up with everyone important to me that I met up and gave them a special three-pronged kunai, in case they ever got in trouble, which brings us to the present, where I felt a pull on my mind, indicating a kunai had been used. Normal Pav. Turning to Kagura he said. I've got to go, Horatian pull, someone must be in danger when you can feel my chakra follow it as fast as possible. He said before giving her a full-blown kiss which she gladly returned. I'll be there. She said with a flirtatious smile. A second later he was gone. I know Kuni, the land of fire. Order. Ijido and I had never been in such trouble before, all she was supposed to do was be on a mission to an outpost within a town to drop off a package, and that was that, now though she was thinking something else was going on. And that something was Akatsuki. In front of the blonde-haired woman were the immortal, zombie brothers Kakuzu and Haydn, and she was in major trouble of actually losing, well that was until teams from Kanoha had appeared. Apparently they were after the same Akatsuki members, from she had heard the two Akatsuki had killed someone called Asuma, one of the team senseis. Ujido had introduced herself as the Nibi no Bakaneko Jinchuriki, which made sense to them with seeing her fighting these two. And it was then they started fighting. Even she knew that was foolish, from her information on them, the team sent were formed out of Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka, and Chouji Akamichi with Kakashi Haddock as the leader the second team was formed out of Sakura Haruno, someone called Yamato, Kurana Yuhi, and someone called Sai. However neither team was getting far, they had seriously underestimated their opponents, as they didn't realize just how powerful this Kakuzu was. They had found out he had five hearts which was truly something they didn't expect, along with the fact he could use all the elements from some masked creatures. Their other opponent Haydn was the hardest as he was invincible literally, however Shikamaru had taken somewhere else to do battle, as he felt it had to be him. When Yamato, Kurinai, Sakura and Sai had gotten there they had sent Sai and Sakura off to help with Shikamaru, as Sakura's medical ninjutsu and Sai's aerial jutsu could be very helpful. Up to now they had killed Kakuzu twice, meaning he had the hearts left, Kakashi had killed one using Rikiri, and the other one was killed by Haydn, who had been tricked by Shikamaru and ended up using Kakuzu's blood in his ritual sacrifice, thinking it was Shikamaru's. Kakuzu's remaining two masks had merged with Kakuzu's back, these masks were blue for Futon and red for Katen, a bad combination. Takashi and his team along with Kurinai and Yamato were exhausted and they knew if some miracle didn't happen, they may never make it out in one piece. We need a miracle. Muttered Kurinai as she surveyed the area and seen it looked like a great war had happened with all the craters and trees that had been reduced to stumps now. I know but we have to everything in our power to stop this guy. Kakashi replied as he too was looking around seeing if there was anything they could use. I can see why this guy is part of the Akatsuki. Said Yamato as he had run out of chakra to use any of his Mokuten jutsus that may make a difference. Ino and Chaoji were practically exhausted and couldn't do any more jutsu, Ino's were ineffective as she needed the opponent to stay still, and Chaoji couldn't get close enough without a jutsu shoved in his face. The Kuzu looked at the in amusement knowing they were fucked, he was going to enjoy taking Kakashi's heart for his own, and maybe Mokuten user or the Jinjutsu mistress. Bijido who had been watching by the side the entire time still exhausted, realized it was now or never. I think I got just what you need. She said gaining their attention as she pulled out an Horatian kunai. I hope he doesn't mind seeing these guys so soon. As soon as Kakashi saw the kunai his mind almost blew, not understanding how this woman could have that kunai, seeing as only one other person could ever use it, which hopefully meant one thing. Duration. How do you have that? Kurinai asked shocked. Ujido just chuckled. Let's just say, you'll be surprised. Once she said that she chucked the kunai as hard as she could in between herself and the Kanohan inns, where a crimson flash blinded them. As soon as the flash vanished the Kanoha team were in shock at seeing someone they hadn't expected in a long time. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze was back. He now looked like an 18-year-old young man, he stood at an impressive height of 6 feet 2, he had blonde spiky hair with black highlights that stood up all over the place that flown down past his shoulder blades, much like Madara Chiha's hairstyle looked like. His face was unblemished not as much as a spot of dust on his tanned face. His Rinnegan eyes were on show for all to see, they still displayed some warmth in them, but not as much as they used to, on his left ear, he had an earring of what looked like a phoenix that dangled slightly on a very short chain. His face was set into a blank stare, as if he was staring at nothing at all. He wore steel tooed black combat boot, along with a pair of baggy black cargo pants with various extra pockets, a shuriken and kunai holster, strapped to each leg due to becoming ambidextrous. He also had a utility belt with several pouches on it, along with scrolls for easier use. 
He wore a normal black t-shirt that had an upturned collar covering his neck, on top of that he wore a black sleeveless trench coat with crimson fire licking the bottom, much like his father's own trench coat, due to having no sleeves on it, his t-shirt covered up his biceps only, however he did wear a pair of fingerless gloves, which seemed perfect for fighting, as they had metal plating fitted in. On the back of the trench he had the kanji for Shinku Senko, crimson flash, and gold stitching vertically. The trench coat's collar stood up covering his neck. Around his neck was also a beautiful silver chain necklace, where it held a replica of a phoenix, along with another beautiful necklace he had received from Tsunade Senju. And last but not least Rikin Jaka strapped to his left side in his utility belt, showing off its beauty, while also being perfectly placed for a quick draw. Looking to his left Naruto saw a panting Yujito. Yujito what's going on? He questioned. Yujito looked towards Kakuzu where Naruto followed her line of vision only narrow his eyes. Akatsuki came after me, I was almost captured when those Konoha shinobi she paused, pointing over to Kakashi and the gang where Naruto got his first look at them in over four years and gave them a nod in acknowledgement and showing no bad blood between them. They sent some of their shinobi after the other Akatsuki member called Hayden but this guy takes the piss. She said before she went on to explain everything that had happened up until he appeared. So gotta kill him three more times huh? He said as if it was no trouble. I'll give it a go. Akashi was still looking at Naruto in wonder, over the years information of Naruto appeared in the bingo book, which he along with every jonin had a copy of and practically knew all about his bloodline, the Rinnegan, the same one that was meant to be a myth. When he read it, some part of him thought it was just a lie to gain attention, but seeing it now was a whole other situation, he could practically the power. Well, there's you Miracle Kurinai. He said with an eye smile. You think Naruto can really beat this guy? I mean all of us had trouble. Ino asked unsure, well she was sure Naruto had become strong, she didn't know just how strong he is. Gurunai said nothing just pulled a bingo book out of her pocket, flipped some pages and gave it to Ino, so her and Chaoji could read it. As she read it, she couldn't believe what is said. Name? Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Age? 18. Hair color? Long blonde hair with black highlights. Eye color? Rinnegan. Alias? Shinku Senko, Crimson Flash. Height? 6'2". Weight. 125. 215 pounds. Heritage. Minato Namikas, Yandame Hokage, and Kishina Uzumaki, Red Death. Rank Class. S Rank. Skills. Exceptional to Jutsu, an Injutsu monster, master Kinjutsu artist, quite skilled in Kinjutsu and a chakra powerhouse, never known to run out of chakra, can't see through most Jinjutsu. Bloodline. The Rinnegan, descendant of the Rikid Msenin, allows the wielder to use all element manipulation. Nature Affinities. Katen, Suetan, Futen, Raten, Doten, Mokuten, Heimten, Shintan and Gravity. Wielder of the Rasengan and the Horatian no Jutsu. Dinchuriki of the Kaiubi no Yoko. Weapon. Zanpakuto. Zanpakuto name. Rikyun Jaka. Description. At least 5 feet long, standard katana with a dark purple handle and a circular hand guard with what looked like a phoenix engraved around the edge. The scabbard was a royal purple with a red tassel that hung off the top just underneath the guard. Compared to the last time she had seen him, he had changed so much, and with what everything said, he seemed almost like a god. He's amazing, perhaps being banished did him some good after all, I doubt he would have this strong in the village. Whoa. Chaoji said shocked. Yep, he's come a long way from the last time we've seen him. Kurinai said in a sort of proud tone. Don't forget hot. Ino blurted out which made her eyes wide with shock, and furthermore when Kurinai said in almost like a trance. Yeah. The Kashi hearing them shook his head. Lucky bastards Naruto. He thought in amusement. With Naruto. Naruto turned back to Yujito and told her. Stay with Kakashi and the other this may get destructive. He said with a smirk making her sigh and shake her head before doing as he said. Naruto walked towards Kakuzu with a look that could certainly kill, as his Rinnegan seemed to penetrate his very being, Kakuzu shivered, it was like he could feel his death before him. Kakuzu just smirked. If you think you can defeat me, you truly are mistaken, just like the Kanoha shinobi hide and killed he said with a laugh. Naruto frowned at that since he hadn't heard someone had gotten killed. Who? Asuma Saratobi I believe his name was. He said making Naruto sharpen his eyes while trying to control his anger. You bastard, now I have more than one reason to kill. I'll make sure you never leave here alive. He said voice full of anger. The Kuzu grunted showing he didn't care about killing Asuma. He was a worthy bounty. He said angering Naruto more. Naruto grit his teeth together at hearing that. Dad's all human life is to you. Bounty. You people disgust me. Well little Jinchuriki what do you plan on doing? Naruto chuckled before holding his right hand up. I plan on showing you what it's like to feel true pain. Shinra Tensei. 
the ground in front of him was literally ripped up breaking away, as if some powerful force was blowing the area away. A second later Kakuzu was picked up off his feet as he went sailing back through a couple trees before stopping. Sidelines. The group looked on in shock at the power of the jutsu, looking at the result they saw what looked like a half pipe that was sent at where Kakuzu was stood which was now a crater. H how the hell did he do that? exclaimed Askino. That was the sixth element. Answered Yamato vaguely. Sixth. Question Chaoji. Yes well you and the others know the primary five there is also a six called gravity, no one really knows how to control it, but it seems the Rinnegan allows that possibility. Answered Kurunai as she marveled at the power. Battle. Bakuzu was in pain, more pain than he thought possible, he wasn't expecting such an attack from the Jinchuriki, and now he paid for it by underestimating him, even though he had that the Jutsu. Standing back up with his arms still extending by his black thread which made them dangle down, reattaching them to make them the size of normal hands, he went through hand seals as the red and blue mask's mouths opened up. Pain. Nkakak no Jutsu. Fire release. Great fireball technique, the red mask then shot out a huge fireball. Dawn. Rankton. Wind release. Drilling air bullet, the blue mask shot a compressed ball of air at the fireball. Both jutsus combined creating a ball of fire with intensity of that of the sun soaring at Naruto who had his eyes closed. The fireball was still raging towards him, he could feel the heat getting closer, his blood pumping, and despite himself his grinned, he had been charging up chakra to use a jutsu he hadn't properly tested yet, but now was a good time as any to stop that fireball. Water was out of the question as it would evaporate, wood would burn, wind he may as well kill himself, there was no other jutsu except. Naruto snapped his eyes open and held out both of his hands and shouted. Jutsu kicking. As soon as the fireball made contact, instead of an explosion, it hit a carrier that formed around Naruto, before it started to be sucked into the barriers at the points of Naruto's hands. A minute later and the fireball had been absorbed. Sorry Kakuzu, but jutsu don't work on me. Sidelines. Holy shit. He just absorbed the freaking jutsu. Ino exclaimed amazed at the jutsu. It appears as if that is one of the abilities of the Rinnegan, truly an amazing dejutsu. Responded Kakashi. Ha. And to think everyone in the village thought that the Sharingan was the greatest, can you imagine if he ever turned on Konoha for revenge? Mused Chaoji. We would have the worst possible enemy. Deduced Kurunai, she had always held respect for Naruto, even if she didn't admit it, and right now she was a little turned on at seeing him fight with such power, after all power attracts. As anyone noticed Naruto has not moved at all since the battle started. Yamato stated, everyone looked down and sure enough no sign of him moving. Amazing. Ino exclaimed as she felt horny herself seeing someone so powerful and hot fight especially with it being Naruto, she had never admitted it before, but she had always found him cute when they were younger, and seeing him now brought out all those emotions. But Shikamaru. Shikamaru had just wrapped a couple dozen explosive tags around Haydn, with his shadow stopping him from moving, now Haydn was hovering over a giant hole that went down for ages. The explosive tags were all connected to the trees around him, and for once in his life he felt fear run through his system, as he knew he could actually die, or be unable to be put back together again, should he collapse in the hole in pieces. What's going on? When did you do this? Haydn yelled as he indicated to the giant hole below him. I just set up this trap beforehand here. That's all. Shikamaru informed him as he was bent slightly panting. This guy he wasn't just separating us two without thinking. He did it to lure me here. If that's true he planned it up to here. Shikamaru then bent down to pick up a fallen pack of cigarettes. If you curse someone, you dig your own too he pulled out a cigarette and put it in his mouth. You killed my sensei by curse he then lit the cigarette. Don't think you can just merrily go your own way. Haydn glared at the lazy Nara so hard you would think he would set a flame. That's your grave. Hakukuku I won't die even if my body is scattered and I only have a head, I'll climb out of here and rip out your throat. Shikamaru took a smoke of the cigarette before taking it out. This forest is special even within the fire country only our clan is allowed to set foot in here no one else will come. Our clan will keep an eye on you forever. As he said that deer were coming out of the tree line all over the place. Shikamaru then felt a hand grasp his shoulder lightly, looking over his shoulder, he saw the spectral figure of Asuma sensei stood there with a proud smile on his face. You did good Shikamaru. Yeah. The spectral Asuma then pulled out his cigarettes pack before pulling out his single cigarettes and putting in his mouth. Shikamaru pulled out his lighter and lit it for one last time. My will of fire I entrust it to you. Those words echoed through Shikamaru's mind as if being told them. Goodbye sensei he said before he flicked the lighter at the bound up figure of Haydn, the lighter then touched the first explosive tag, causing a chain reaction which caused a massive blast that rocked the area surrounding him. As the smoke cleared Shikamaru looked down the blood splattered hole to see the various parts of Haydn lying at the bottom while his head was facing him. 
Ah jaya ha 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 well look at this you've screwed me over pretty bad. Haydn's head yelled up at Shikamaru. But Jashin Sama will deal his retribution. Feel the raw of divin judgment. Yeah, like I'm of afraid of that. Shikamaru said as he pulled out a kunai with a wire attached to it. You and me we believe in different things. I believe in the willow fire, but right now your god isn't that Jashin Sama or whatever it's me. Pulling his kunai up to his face level he said. Now I deal my judgment. He then threw the kunai with an explosive tag attached to the midsection of the hole, where it then blew up making Haydn go wide-eyed. Like I said. You will feel the wrath of the divine Jashin Sama's divine judgment. Just you wait. Haydn yelled up like a crazed man as rubble fell on him. Jayahaha I shall be the executor of that judgment. I can take you out with just my teeth. I'll bite you down into tiny little pieces. He yelled up as the last piece of rock fell on his head. But Naruto. Bakuzu had to admit he was not going to win, this man was surely more powerful than anyone he had ever fought, he may even be more powerful than pain, and that was saying something. Ahaha, you remind me of leader Sama. He said, he may as well help out the guy who proved to be more powerful than him and given him a good workout. Leader Sama? Naruto questioned. Yes the leader of Akatsuki has your eyes the Rinnegan. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, of course he only he acted surprised as he knew already thanks to his informant within the organization. I'll have to remind to repay Konin-chan. Naruto nodded. I see. Not giving Kakuzu any chance Naruto once more performed another jutsu. Mokuten. Jibaku eyes him. Out of nowhere a tree started to grow around Kakuzu, effectively trapping him strongly, even though he tried to break through. Page Bunshin. He said as he created a clone, putting his hand out he formed a Rasengan his clone started to add wind chakra, only this time the wind started to pick up ripping the ground apart, destroying trees around him, he closed his eyes, while focusing on the power of the jutsu. Dawn. Rasen Shuriken. Naruto declared while everyone had to shield their eyes from the sheer power coming from it. Naruto held up his hand as the jutsu whirled around him taking on the appearance of four large points, making the Rasengan appear as a giant Fkma shuriken, with the Rasengan in the center remaining a perfect sphere. Bakuzu looked at it like he had shit himself, which at this situation he wouldn't surprise himself if he did. That jutsu I have to get out of here that will definitely kill me. Sideline. I I can't believe he done it. Exclaimed Kakashi who right now seemed ecstatic, confusing the others around him. Then what? Asked Kurinai as the wind seemed to get stronger and stronger. He completed the Rasengan. Completed. Asked Ino as the screeching was getting higher by the minute. Bakashi nodded. Yes when the Yandane created the Rasengan he initially wanted it to combine his elemental affinity with it to make the ultimate jutsu possible, however he was never able to progress that far as he had a pregnant wife to take care of and truthfully he never had the control for it. But it seems Naruto has done the impossible again. He exclaimed happily and the others finally got what he was saying. Amazing. Chaoji said proud of how far his friend had come from being the dead last. Naruto-kun can really surprise you at times. Yujito spoke with a smirk. Battle. Naruto cocked his arm back and looked at Kakuzu who was struggling in the tree he was in. Goodbye Fton. Rasen Shuriken. Swinging his arm forward he threw the jutsu, no one could believe it, Naruto had just thrown a jutsu that needed so much control and had so much power that no one could even dream of using, and yet he simply chucked it like it was nothing. The Rasen shuriken soared across the battlefield like a disc screeching until it hit its mark cutting through the tree and lifting Kakuzu up in the air from the force. The Rasen shuriken then exploded creating a dome 80 feet wide of wind and chakra inside the dome, though the masks that were attached started to crack all over before finally dissolving into nothingness and Kakuzu was being cut to shreds at a molecular level. Naruto stood at the same spot amazed at his jutsu as it was the first time he used it against someone, he looked as the dome started lowering down until it revealed Kakuzu still floating in mid-air being attacked by hundreds if not thousands of tiny wind blades before falling down in the 40 feet deep crater. Naruto started walking towards the crater along with his friends who jumped by him. Such power! exclaimed Ino as she almost pissed herself seeing the destructive power. Amazing! whispered Kurinai as she wished and promised that she would never get on Naruto's bad side, good thing she always admired him then. She was also happy that one of the people who had a hand in killing Asuma was now dead. Many believed that her and Asuma were an item for a while when in reality they were close friends who always shared their secrets, ever since the academy they were like siblings. She only hoped Shikamaru was alright as he was the closest to Asuma, probably more than her on some level. She also knew that Naruto viewed Asuma as some sort of uncle, as he was the only other person other than the Sandane who actually treated him like a real person when he was younger. Asuma had informed her of Naruto and what he was like which caused her to become intrigued and understood that his idiotic ways was a mask to hide the pain as it was easier that way, something she could relate to. 
The Kashi also was awed and terrified of the jutsu Naruto had just used as it was truly a powerful jutsu, which looked like it was a one-hit kill. In fact all of Naruto's jutsu that had seen had been destructive and high level. If he was honest with himself he didn't expect Naruto to become this much powerful, he was going to fix his past mistakes and hope that he could still give Naruto some jutsu, such as his own Chidori and Rikiri, which knowing Naruto he could improve them in ways he only wished he could. The Kashi walked up to Naruto a little wobbly at first, as he was slightly fatigued from his previous battle. He stood by Naruto and grasped his shoulder in a proud way. Your father would be proud of you. He said making Naruto grin and scratch the back of his head which caused Ino and Kurinai to nearly shout Kawei. Before anyone could say anything they heard someone appearing close by. Son of bitch. Looking over they came to the side of Kagura looking at the crater with wide eyes. Lifting her eyes from that she walked over to Naruto. You never told me about that jutsu Naruto-kun. She said with a pout which Kurinai thought she looked like Anko. It was too dangerous to show you without getting hurt. He explained casually. Hearing Kakashi cough, Naruto looked at him before he realized that no one knew Kagura. Sorry, guys this is Kagura and Kai the Shijahi Kaiho. He said making them wide-eyed that Naruto knew such a person, it wasn't a secret that she was a bloodthirsty. Kagura, this Kakashi Haddock, Kurinai Yuhi, Ino Yamanaka, Chouji Akimichi, and from I understand, Yamato. It's nice to meet you. Kakashi said being polite. Right back at ya. She said before turning to Naruto. We should get going soon. Where are you going? Kurinai asked. Well, we were going to take Yujito back to Kumo and kick the shit out of the council, for what I can presume sending her here for a trap, am I right? He asked Yujito who grew a scowl. Yep, those bastards have hated me for as long as I can remember. Well, we'll be seeing ya. Naruto said as he started to walk away before stopping and getting something out of his pocket and going back to Kakashi. Could you give this back to Tsunade, it's important, oh, and I've made sure only she or Jiraiya can open it. He told him before he gave him a scroll and getting a nod. Sure Naruto do you think you'll ever return? Sighing Naruto turned back to look at Kagura who was talking with Yujito. I don't know, I doubt it while Danzo and the elders are still there and if I was, I'd make sure Kagura comes with me. Lovers? Kakashi asked with a raised brow while Kurinai and Ino glared at him until Naruto actually chuckled. More than you know Kakashi more than you know. He said with a smirk before he walked away towards the center of the crater, leaving two blushing women and a perversely giggling man while Chaoji and Yamato blinked between the interaction. Naruto walked over to the body of Kakuzu and opened up a scroll in front of him, drawing some seals on the black scroll, he then placed his hand on the seal and Kakuzu, and just like the body disappeared. Walking back to Kagura and Yujito, he grasped both of their shoulders before vanishing in a crimson flash, leaving the Konohanins to go home. But Shikamaru. Shikamaru had just walked out of the forest line with a deer of his clan walking alongside him. He was currently holding the packet of cigarettes that were once Asuma's in his hand. Before he could go on any further a pink and black blur dropped down in front of him. Sakura and Sai dropped down in front of Shikamaru in a crouch and stood up, they notice how Shikamaru looked disheveled, as if he had been in a war of his own, and they also noticed a deer next to him which they thought is strange. Here you are. Sakura exclaimed happy to see Shikamaru alive. Reinforcements? Asked Shikamaru with a raised eyebrow. You're a little late aren't you? Sakura and Sai both looked shocked for a moment before Sakura asked. What? Shikamaru you took out an Akatsuki on your own? Bolsai muttered. He's more impressive than I thought. Shikamaru then put the pack in his pouch. This time I really had to do it, so yeah he said as he glanced at the deer besides him. Sakura smiled slightly secretly proud of her friend. Yeah I guess. What's going on over at the others? We left them to go help you so Sakura trailed while Sai finished off. Let's go back to them. The three of them then jumped into the trees to meet up with the others and unknowingly an old friend. Later. Both teams eventually joined up and were now stood in a part of the forest debriefing each other about what had happened. So Naruto really shown up huh? Sakura asked wishing she had seen him. Yep, he's strong too, but right now, we need to get back to Konoha, Naruto asked me to give Tsunade a scroll, and it might be important. Kakashi said getting a nod from everyone before they shot off. Kakashi only hoped the scroll didn't contain any dreadful news oh he had no idea. Tsunade sighed as she listened to Kakashi's report on the mission and how they almost got killed, or at least they would have had a certain blonde-haired Jinchuriki not saved them at the last minute. While she was glad that Naruto seemed to be doing well and happy with his life, and from what Kakashi had also passed on to her, he's already on his way to rebuilding his clan, she was also sad that she hadn't been able to see him herself. After all these years she still couldn't get over the fact of how strong Naruto had gotten, stronger than possibly the Yandame, and that was saying something. She sometimes wondered why Naruto never created his own village, with his popularity she knew it wouldn't be hard to recruit Shinobi. 
to think that the very village she served had banished him out of their fear. On some level she was happy he was banished, not because she had ill intentions towards him, but rather because she wanted him to enjoy his life and what's out there, rather than be stuck in a village that hates your guts. Oh and Tsunade Sama, Naruto told me to give you this. He said handing her a scroll which she hastily took out of his hands and tore it open. Unraveling the scroll she read it to herself. Dear Tsunade. Sorry I've not been able to make contact until now, things have been stressful for the past few years, what with all the traveling and training for Akatsuki, Arachimaru and Sasuke. Anyway, hopefully when I see you we can talk about what I've done the past few years. Right now though there is an important issue that Kanoha needs to be aware of, despite my anger towards Danzo and the elders, I don't wish to see Kanoha burned to the ground. The reason for this scroll is that I believe that Arachimaru is planning an attack on Kanoha in the next couple of weeks. I know it may not sound believable, but I have someone who is close to Orochimaru as my spy, he has been rebuilding his forces the past few years, while improving on the cursed seal to allow the wearers more control, making them more dangerous. What I need for you to do however is plead with the council to hire me as a sort of mercenary, this will also allow me the opportunity to be able to help protect Kanoha for a while, as I know Akatsuki will attack there knowing I have people I care about. Also at the bottom of this scroll is a seal that only your blood will open it use it if there is no other option. Goodbye, hopefully I'll see you soon. Love Naruto. P.S. I'll be bringing Kagura if I am coming back. I will be on my way to Takigakur if you need to reply. Smiling to herself at the fact she may see Naruto soon, she bit her thumb and slid it along the seal, smearing her blood on it, causing a poof revealing the three-pronged kunai which caused her eyes to widen. Son of a bitch actually learnt it. Chuckling to herself she pocketed the kunai before looking up at teams in front of her. Thank you Kakashi, you're all dismissed. She said with a smile while they gave nods before leaving. Pressing a button on the intercom she spoke. Shizun, call a council meeting in the next hour and tell them it's important. She ordered. Hi Tsunade Sama. She heard back. Nodding to herself she relaxed back in her chair while hoping she sees Naruto soon. Kumagakur. Rakage Tower. There weren't many things that could easily scare the Rakage, being born and raised in a place such as Kumo had built a tough shell around him and learned to be calm and face all dangers that may come at you. Despite this there were things that did scare him, such as his assistant who was get pissed at him for missing a meeting or accidentally destroying his office and training ground. Then again, maybe all women could scare him, especially when they give you the look. And let's not get started on the paperwork fiasco that seemed to multiply whenever he looked away. However what really scares him is the full on glare by a pair of Rinnegan eyes, while Yujito and Kagura stood up to the side watching everything. What the hell is wrong with you? Naruto growled out angrily. What? The Rakage asked confused. You sent Yujito on a mission to deliver a package, instead she got ambushed by a pair of Akatsuki, now try and tell me how they knew exactly where she would be. He spat out. The council gave me the mission for Yujito, said it was important and only she could do it. Rakage explained. And you didn't make sure what the mission was? You know better than me that the council want Yujito gone, I know for a fact that if it was Killer B going on that mission, you would have double checked everything. At that the Rakage jumped out his chair how da only for him to be forced down by an invisible force. It was at this point that Team Samui came through the door and could easily sense the tension in the room, especially when they hadn't seen Naruto so angry and the rakage so red in the face. You know full well that you should have backtracked the mission, make sure it was reliable, and who the client was if Yujito didn't have my Horatian kunai she may have been dead right now, or worse. He exclaimed angrily. I have half a mind to go and kill those pathetic counselors, they remind me too much of Kanoha's counsel. All right, you're right, I should have have double checked them, but I didn't expect the council to pull this one on me, especially when they're already scared of you. He admitted while Team Samui looked on in shock at what was happening, looking at Yujito off to the side they saw her looking down, while Kagura had a blank look on her face. If they're scared of me, I'll go give them reason to be even more scared. Naruto said with a creepy grin before he vanished in a crimson flash. Oh shit. Rakage groaned before getting up with the others following. Council Chamber. As the council were in a meeting of the usual day-by-day -day business, while silently celebrating for getting rid of the demon child once and for all, they were ill-prepared for the doors to come flying off its hinges and meeting the deathly gaze of the Rinnegan. How are you all this fine day? He asked with a sickly sweet voice. Namaka's Sama whispered a merchant in shock. I think it's been a lovely day to be honest, traveling around, enjoying the sights, when all of a sudden I was teleported to a fight involving the Akatsuki and a certain Jinchuriki now, I know you guys had nothing to do with that right. He asked rhetorically, and yet it sounded so sincere. Of course, we would never do something like that. One man protested. So it wasn't you who assigned the Yujito her mission, which ended up being an ambush. No. Like we said, we wouldn't do such a thing. 
Another man protested while sweat trickled down his forehead. I can never understand councils, I mean this village practically worships Jinchuriki, views them as something akin to angels, the complete opposite of my home and yet, there's people like you who wish to take it all away from them. And for what? Power. Money. You people make me sick, if I were the rakage I would have you in jail for treason, the last time I checked a Jinchuriki is a human being, a shinobi, part of the community and I know better than anyone seeing as I am one myself. He growled out as the council started glaring at him, behind Naruto stood the rakage, Yujito, Team Samui and Killer B who had heard the commotion. Listen here you disrespectful brat, you can't tell any of us what to do, this is not your village, so go home where you and your kind belong. One of the more stupid council members ranted. Naruto's eyes bored into the council members with a chilly gaze, lifting his hand up, he used the power over gravity to send the man against the wall, cracking his bones under the pressure. You're right, I'm not part of the village I'm an ally from the outside, and if you want to keep it that way treat my kind with respect that they actually do deserve because, I doubt you want me as your enemy. He threatened them before letting the guy fall, breathing in to calm himself he turned around with a small smile. Well, that's that taken care of what we having for dinner. He asked causing them to face fault at the question. The old Naruto will always be there somewhere. On Hagakur. Okage Tower. Council Chamber. The council had changed a lot in the years Naruto was gone, as there used to be three sides to the council, the civilian, shinobi and the elders. However through the years they all noticed that the civilian side were taking votes in matters that had nothing to do with them whatsoever, so they came to the decision to throw them out and keep the elders and shinobi side to make decisions. Now sat around the room was Tsunade Senju, Jiraiya, Tsumin Yazuka, Hiyashi Hayuga, Shibi Aburam, Choza Akamichi, Shikaku Nara, Inoichi Yamanaka, Danzo Shimura, Kahari Yudatane and Hamura Mitakado. What is this meeting about Tsunade? Danzo asked with his one eye staring in a bored fashion. You will call me Hokage Sama or Tsunade Sama Danzo. She snapped irritated with a cripple. Anyway, I have received information from a reliable source and it could cost us dearly depending on the way we act. What is it? Su asked knowing it can't be good, well when is it ever? In two weeks time Orochimaru will attack us with everything he has. She informed them causing them all to gasp in shock. We must do something to stop them, we don't have the resources at the moment to deal with an attack by Orochimaru. Inoichi informed them while getting nods all around. I know, I have sent a scroll to the Kazakiage informing him of our situation, and now all we have to do is wait for his reply. Will he even help us? Choza asked getting everyone's attention. I mean wasn't he best friends with Naruto, what reason does he have to help us? Tsunade chuckled and let a small smile grace her features. Because we will be hiring Naruto as a mercenary to write with us in the upcoming invasion. Absolutely not. Danzo exclaimed speaking for the first time. That monster cannot be trusted whatsoever, we don't even know where his loyalties lie. Oh for fuck's sake. Hiashi spoke out surprising them all since he never swore. Naruto has never betrayed us, never lead us to believe he wasn't loyal to his friends, the only reason you don't want him here is because you're afraid of how strong he has gotten and lie to me, we've all read the bingo book, he is his father's son, no doubt about it and that scares you more than you like to admit. Everyone was stunned to silence hearing that, despite knowing Naruto wouldn't kill them or attack them, elders not included, he was still a man to be feared for his abilities that he had gained in the recent years. The Ashi's correct, we can't let irrational fears play with our minds, we have done that many times before, and look at where it has gotten us I say we bring Naruto back, but leave it up to him whether or not he wants to be a shinobi of Konoha or just a mercenary. Shikaku explained. So the rest of you agree? Tsunade asked whilst the clan heads gave a nod, which was enough for her. Very well, I will send the rookies out to retrieve Naruto in the next week to bring him back. She said before getting up and leaving. You're coming back Brad. I'll finally see the man you've grown up to be. Later. Tsunade's office. Tsunade Senju was currently sat behind her office contemplating on the latest news she had gotten, Akatsuki had been sighted close to Takigakur, the same place Naruto said he was going to be, and the only reason she could think of them being there is the Jinchuriki they currently have protected. But she knew they wouldn't be able to stop the Akatsuki so, that is why standing in front of her were the Rookie 12, along with Kakashi Haddock, Kurana Yuhi, Maido Gai. She had also informed them about the invasion that will be led by Orochimaru in the coming weeks. The rookie 12 had changed quite a bit over the years since Naruto was banished. Sakura had taken her training more seriously under Tsunade and became what people had dubbed Mini Tsunade with her strength and expertise in the medical department. She had also been dying to apologize to Naruto for everything she had said to the boy as she had never been able to forgive herself. 
The fact that he was banished because of Sasuke didn't help matters either, especially when she realized just how corrupt Sasuke had become over time she changed her outfit, which now consisted of the same basic red top as in, with black gloves, black high-heeled boots, black shorts, short pink apron-like skirt, and pink elbow protectors. Sakura is now also armed with a Chunin's tent above her medical pouch, forehead protector has also changed to red in color. Ino had changed drastically, she had become more focused on her training much to everyone's shock, and she learned most of her family's jutsu, as well as an array of elemental jutsu that had helped her greatly in missions. Now she understood why Naruto loved jutsu so much. Ino had removed the bandages that she used to wear around her waist, which allowed her stomach to be seen, and replaced the fabric armwear on her elbows with fishnet, and also wears fishnet over her knees. Ino is now also equipped with a chunin's tent, which she wears above her medical pouch much like Sakura. Shikamaru hadn't honestly changed much, other than the fact he actually trained harder, maybe because he wanted to help Naruto in the future, as he knew of the dangers the blonde faced, or maybe it was because he realized just how dangerous missions were if not fully prepared, something he learned on his last mission with Naruto. Shikamaru has grown noticeably taller. He has also gone under a costume change, sporting a different undershirt and pants, and changing his earrings from rings to studs, though the placement of his headband is the same place as it always was. Shikamaru has been equipped with a Chunin's tent, he was also wearing a flak jacket ever since he first became a Chunin. Tauji hadn't changed much either other than deciding to take his training more seriously, since in the retrieval mission, he was beaten within an inch of his life, thanks to his family's pills, ever since then he had never had to use them. Chaoji has brown hair, swirl marks on his cheeks, and like the rest of his clan, he has a much rounder physique than most other people. He sports a red top with armor on his torso, arms, and upper legs, similar to his father. On the front of his chest armor is the obligatory kanji for eat. His brown hair has grown much longer, changes his earrings from rings to studs, and he now looks less overweight and more muscular, just like what he himself had always claimed. Big boned. Hiba also has changed a lot ever since Naruto was banished he had become more of a controlled person, instead of being a loud mouth he was more calm with his nerves and able to fight better now that he didn't get angry fast. He has messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth, and nails that he can change into claws. He also has the distinct red fang markings of the Inuzuka clan on his cheeks. His outfit changed to a form-fitting black jacket and pants with a black forehead protector and black sandals. Shino was the same, just like all Aburam he didn't really say much to anyone, and to be honest, he preferred it that way as it was much more relaxing. Shino himself didn't like the way Naruto was banished, since he had kind of admired the boy years ago, as he always felt like he was like himself in the regards of being an outcast. Shino has dark bushy brown hair, pale skin, his appearance became even more mysterious, with his jacket hanging down to his knees, and the addition of a hood that obstructs his face even more and a satchel on his back. Anada had changed the most though, she never stuttered anymore, she was probably the most confident person there and one of the strongest Kanoichi, ever since the banishment she had thrown herself into training non-stop, even to such levels that her father actually worried for her, which was a first. She had let her hair grow to waist length and wears a white lavender jacket with navy pants with black sandals. Although she still wears her forehead protector around her neck, the cloth has changed to black in color. Denton hadn't changed much at all, since she didn't really know Naruto it didn't affect her all that much, well, not to the extent it did in the others anyway. Her outfit had changed from a pink blouse to a white one and red pants instead of green. She now wears black fingerless gloves, everything is still a reference to the Chinese culture. She holds a giant tool summoning scroll on her back that she uses when fighting. Lee had seemed depressed as he looked up to Naruto as he saw him as a brother of sorts, seeing as Naruto, like himself was the dead lasts of their year, hearing him being banished, he couldn't help but feel it was most unyouthful, which made him train twice as hard, to the displeasure of his teammates. Lee well he wore the same except for a vest op like many other shinobi, plus the fact he was much taller now. Niji had started mentioning fate a bit more again, as he saw that with Naruto banished that fate had intervened stopping Naruto from achieving his goal to become Hokage, never mind the fact Sasuke was welcomed back like fuck all happened. Niji abandoned the bandages. Instead of the regular tan jacket and shorts, he now wears traditional white and black Hyuga robes. This may have not only been to make his attacks easier, but to show that he is now closer to his clan. Niji is usually seen with a large tan and black drawstring bag, which he carries over his shoulder. Looking up Sunade held a grave look. I've called you all here for a very special mission that needs each and every one of you. The Kashi seemed to raise an eyebrow at that. A mission that needs us all, what could be so important? He asked with everyone else silently agreeing. Sunade folded her hands in front of her face and sighed. Akatsuki. 
That one single word was enough to stop any comments that had been on their tongues as they all stiffened up and drew in gasps, thinking and hoping that Naruto was involved somehow. And Naruto. They had all been told about Naruto's connection with the group and had trained as hard as they could to help fight alongside him, whether he was banished or not, he was still a comrade. Sakura who had her hands gripping the side of her skirt, looked at Tsunade with a grave look. What of Akatsuki? She asked wanting to know what they would be facing. Akatsuki had been sighted close to Takigakur, at first I didn't see what they were after from there, until I realized they currently have a Kinoichi there that goes by the name of FK, the Jinchuriki of the Nanabi no Kabutamushi. She said causing everyone's eyes to widen. What has Naruto got to do with this though? Kurin I asked confused. I'll get to that in a moment don't worry. She promised. Do we know what member Akatsuki was sighted? Niji asked. Tsunade sighed and shook her head. Unfortunately we don't have a clue, the only thing that can honestly be done is be prepared for anything that may come at you. When do we leave? Lee asked wanting a good fight. As soon as possible, I want you all to go home and pack whatever you will need for this mission everyone gave a nod of acknowledgement. And in a week Naruto will be at Takigakur, for probably the same reasons. I don't understand. Tenten said confused. Naruto sent me a scroll by giving it to Kakashi when his team met him, it told me all about this invasion by Rachimaru, and that he wanted us to hire him as a mercenary, which is what you guys will make sure you do in one week, I want you all to make contact with Naruto and tell him he can come back. Everyone smiled at that glad to have him back. Will he be a shinobi of Konoha? Shikamaru asked. That's up to him, he can be a shinobi of the leaf or simply be a mercenary also there will a woman with him Kagura. She said only for Kakashi to giggle perversely. Oh yes, she will definitely be with him. He said with another giggle. Nevertheless, help fend off Akatsuki from taking FK and bring back Naruto Uzumaki Namak is dismissed. Getting a round of nods they left to prepare for what they knew was going to be a tiresome mission. Forest outside of Takigakur. One week later. Naruto and Kagura had left Kumo after spending a couple days to catch up on some kinjutsu training, as they felt like they were lacking in that area. In those days however Naruto had started to have some sort of relationship with Yujito, Samui and Kari, although not intimate yet. He had told them he would end up having a harem because he wanted to rebuild his clan back to what it once was, so this led to explaining to them about Kagura already part of the harem, Mei Terumi, the Mizukage wanted to be and a friend of his would be too, obviously he couldn't tell them it was Konan seeing as she is his spy, and any information leaked out would put her in danger. And to his surprise they were more than happy, Will Carey proved it by giving him one of the most intense makeout session he had ever had, Yujito had done similar thanks to Nibi encouraging her, while Samui and him kissed, but not to the extent of the other, due to her having created an ice wall around her heart, which was slowly crumbling each passing day. It was also the time of week to go to Takigakur because he had to check up on FK, the Jinchuriki of the Nanabi no Kabutamushi, he had met her a couple years ago, only she only knew him as her village's hero for helping out her brother Shibuki. They had eventually gained a good friendship due to them coming from similar backgrounds, as the only one who really liked her was her brother, while the village just ignored her. Order of Takigakur. Slave Camp. In a dense jungle that went on for miles inside of Kusagakur, a bunch of bandits and some missing nin from various villages were laughing, drinking, and chatting about how they raided a small village, killing men, children and women alike. In the camp they had captured women who were ages 14 to 35 and imprisoned in cages as a sort of victory trophy. They were whimpering and crying because they knew that with being captured by bandits and missing nin, they would plan on raping them and doing unspeakable things to them. Just then all of the mentioned bandits and missing nin got up and approached the cages, looking like animals on the hunt with bottles of sake swinging around, showing just how drunk they were, terrifying the woman and hoping for a miracle to drop down. Ahaha, look at them crying and whimpering. One bandit said with a malicious smile on his face as some women ducked their heads away scared to death. Another bandit stepped forward with a smirk on his face. Haha, ha, ha, it just makes it all the more fun. Well, then a missing nin with a slash to Wagaker headband. Why are we waiting? He said as he unlocked a cage and pulled a woman out who looked to be in her twenties, kicking and screaming the whole time only for the missing nin to slap her. Shut it bitch, soon you'll be screaming for a different reason. He said with insane laughter at the end with everyone else joining in. Before anyone could do anything a voice called out through the forest. Had number four. By Akurai. A large streak of condensed yellow lightning burst from the behind the trees and struck the missing nin in the side of the head, killing the man instantly, allowing the woman to drop down and scramble back. You people disgust me, humans like you should never exist. A voice said as a figure dropped into view revealing it to be Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and he was not happy. The bandit who was clearly drunk laughed at the newcomer. Ho ho ho, look what we have here fellers, some punk kid wanting to play ninja. 
he said laughing more along with the bandits while the missing nin were getting a bit scared at seeing the person shinobi came to fear when they saw the renowned shinku senko. Naruto chuckled and shook his head. You guys really need to pay attention to who you're talking to. He said narrowing his eyes and his hand gripped the hilt of Rikyun Jaka tightly, prepared to start killing. One of the missing nin gulped fearfully and turned to his allies. We should let it go, this guy is the Shinku Senko, we don't stand a chance. His fellow missing nins gave hesitant nods, while some of the less intelligent bandits laughed loudly. Ah, as if this one of punk could have his words were cut off as he started to spit out blood randomly, looking down he saw a katana stab through his heart from behind him. Everyone else started getting panicked as they watched the blonde shinobi vanish from his spot and appearing behind the bandit, stabbing him in the chest like it was nothing, heat started to come off of the stab wound before the person was completely enveloped in flames and turned to dust. Naruto suddenly turned around and shot forward with his sword dragging behind him as he started cutting down bandit and shinobi alike, as if they were mere flies on the wall, screams filled the forest as heads rolled, limbs were lost, and half of those that were struck by Rikki and Jaka were turned to dust and ash while small fires started popping up. The area was soon covered in scorch marks from the dead bandits and missing nin that once stood against a force known as Shinku Senko, showing everyone why they should never screw him. Naruto sheathed Rick and Jaka securely and turned towards the cages, where all of the women were looking at him in awe with small blushes on their faces at seeing their hero in action. Walking over to them he unlocked all the cages, causing all the women to run over to Naruto thanking him, hugging him, and even kissing him all over, for freeing them from a fate worse than death. Naruto chuckled as he backed away slightly looking at them all. Why don't I get you all back to your village so you can be with your loved ones? He said with a smile as they all nodded their head vigorously with giant smiles on their faces small village outside of Takigakur. Reaching the village Naruto found all of the women's family, friends and loved ones were waiting at the gate for them, as soon as they laid eyes on the women they immediately swarmed them thanking the gods they had been returned to them before anything terrible could happen. Naruto watched the scene with a small smile on his face, glad he could reunite families with each other. Just as he was about to turn around and leave to get on his way an elderly voice stopped him in his tracks. Wait a minute young man. The male voice says. Naruto turns around to see a man who looked to be about 70, crouched over slightly holding an envelope in his hands walking towards him. Wait. Please take this money. It's for saving my daughter and everyone's loved one from those horrible bandits and shinobi. He says but Naruto shakes his head and smiles. No thanks old man, keep your money, I didn't do it for that. Naruto explained getting a look of shock and awe from him and the villagers. A are you sure? W we were gonna pay for bringing them back. Didn't you do this for money? He asks and Naruto's response was a shake of his head. No sir, I just did what I thought is right besides if there's one thing I hate more than anything, it's bandits and missing men who think they can do whatever the hell they like, and money right now is the least of my worries, use it for your own purpose. He said with a grin on his face. The man just blinks at Naruto for a while, but then smiles back. Thank you so much young man, oh, where are my manners, my name is Momoji. We are forever in your debt for bringing the women back, we don't know what we would do if something had happened he said, bowing his head in thankfulness, while everyone else also bowed. Naruto simply chuckled and smiled. You're welcome and if you have any more problems with bandits, look me up. Well it's time for me to go. See ya. He says as his body started to turn into fire before dissipating, leaving no sign of him being stood there. Later that day. The Kigakur. The Kinoichi stood in an open field with a nervous look on her face as she faced her opponent, this woman was Fu, the Jinchuriki of the Nanabi no Kabutamushi. FK wore a clip with her green hair and had pink eyes. Her ninja outfit consisted of a high white shirt, wide armlets, and a fishnet waistband, her Takigakur forehead protector being worn on her arm like Shikimaru. FK also carried a red cylindrical object on her back. Her opponents however was from the world-renowned organization known as Akatsuki, he was however called Kisum Hashigaki, Kisum was a very tall and strong shinobi, with a distinctive shark-like appearance, complete with pale blue skin, small white eyes, gill-like facial structures, and sharp triangular teeth. Kisum also wears a dark purple nail color, like Itachi. Underneath his Akatsuki cloak, Kisum wears an outfit similar to the one that his colleague, Zabuza Mamachi, wore. On his left ring finger is his Akatsuki ring, which bears the kanji for South, W, Nan. Come on girly, just come peacefully, otherwise my Samahada will be getting some lovely chakra to eat from you. Kissum said with a feral smirk showing his sharp teeth. FK looked at her opponent and frowned slightly, she knew that this fish man would beat her, she was strong, but she wasn't that strong to beat someone of this caliber. But he wants Nanabi, I can't let him take her never mind the fact that I will be killed, I have to do all I can. Where the hell is Naruto when you need him? You think I'll give up just like that? You really are as dumb as you look. 
she said with a smirk as Kissam just grinned wider as he gripped Samahata. Well then I'll just have to shave your legs off first. Shooting forward he brought Samahata around and swung at FK, who brought a kunai up with Chakra flowing through it to defend herself. Samahata was brought down on the kunai, causing an explosion to erupt as a crater was formed. FK pushed Kissam off of her and flipped backwards to get some distance between them so she could eye the situation better, looking ahead she saw Kissam stood in the newly created crater, with his Samahada hung on his shoulder as he stared at her with his fish-like eyes. FK held her arms out as bugs started to come from under her armbands before flying around her making Kissam's eyebrow raise. With having the Nanabi no Kabutamushi sealed within me, it gives me the abilities to control bugs, much like the Aburam of Kanoha do. Thrusting her arms out, what seemed like thousands of bugs flew at Kissam at astounding speed, flipping through hand seals he called out. Suiten. Sukdan no Jutsu. Opening his mouth a large amount of water shot out of it, where it then started taking the ghostly form of a shark that cut through the bugs heading for FK. FK seeing the danger heading for her put her hands in a seal and called out. Mushy came no Jutsu. All of her bugs suddenly flew towards her and wrapped around her making a dome-like shield protecting her as the water shark struck the shield, causing a small tremor in the earth. But the Kanoha team. At the border between Hai no Kuni and Takigakur. We are close. Shino said causing everyone to look at him as they all jumped through the trees. How do you know? Tenten asked with a raised brow. I can sense bugs being used along with someone that holds a large amount of chakra. He explained. The bugs must be a side effect of having the Nanabi no Kabutamushi sealed within her, making her like an aburum. Niji deduced getting nods from his fellow Jonan. Fiba started sniffing around before scrunching his nose in disgust. Too I can smell what reminds me of fish and a lot of blood, as if this person had killed all his life. Bakashi placed his hand under his chin thinking before his lone eye widened. Out of Akatsuki the only one who sounds like that is Kisum Hashigaki, if that is the case we need to hurry up. What's so dangerous about him? Ino asked with a confused face. Kisum Hashigaki was a former member of the Kiri no Shinobigaton and Ananin SHK, his chakra reserves could rival a Biju making him a powerhouse, and his sword Samahada is a truly monstrous thing, if there is anyone in Akatsuki who is a real danger, it is him. Kakashi explained making everyone's eyes widen. Kakashi's eye also widened when he realized something. Itachi and he were after Naruto. He said making them look at him in shock. When the pair came to Konoha all those years ago, they told me they were looking for the Yandame's legacy. So what does that mean? Naruto is Kisum's target. Sakura asked with a worried look. Gurunai sighed sadly, knowing it may be true. It may be possible, but why would he be without Itachi unless they're not partners anymore? We should hurry then, we have no idea what we'll be getting into. Guy said in a moment of seriousness as he got nods from all around before the shot off. But Naruto. Naruto was flying through the trees at full speed, he had felt demonic chakra not long ago, and lucky for him he wasn't that far from the location, what made him panic more was when he felt a familiar and an extremely high level of chakra. He knew without a doubt that it was Akatsuki attacking Takigakur for their Jinchiriki, lucky for him he had been there before and was familiar with the village leader Shibuki, over the years he had found out that the village had saw him as a hero, much like other villages he had saved has. He couldn't help but feel proud of himself at the fact that he was being seen as a hero in different countries and yet he couldn't even get that sort of respect in his own village. Shaking his head from his thoughts, he narrowed his eyes ahead of him focusing on his goal to save his fellow Jinchiriki. Akatsuki's going to be one more member down when I'm through with them. He said with venom lacing his tone. You're not alone in that one. Kagura said with equal venom in her tone. Oh and next time you go off to save some people, at least leave me some notice will ya? She said with a tick mark on her forehead as he had just shot off leaving her in the dust. Sorry. He said with a sheepish look. Hero complex can't help it but you shouldn't be so slow. He said with chuckle as she glared at him before he flew off while hearing her scream several curse words. But FK and kiss him. FK's bugs dispersed from around her as she held out her hand firing them at kiss him, who just kept batting them away with his large sword getting annoyed as more and more bugs came at him. The Jutsu. Mushidama. She called out as all of the bugs around Kissam covered his entire body sucking chakra out of him, what she didn't realize however, was that Kissam held a lot of chakra. All of a sudden water started leaking out of the bugs before it exploded in water, showing that it was a Mizubunshin no Jutsu. She said shocked that she hadn't noticed when he made a clone. Must have been when I was shielded by my bugs, the crafty bastard. She was shaken from her thoughts as she was hidden her with a such strength that she was sent flying hitting the ground, causing her to get cut up along the way. Placing her hand on the ground she slowed herself down and twisted so that she could flip up to stand on her feet, glaring a kissum who had a smirk on his face, she noticed how the wrapping on Samahada had come of at the top revealing blue scales. 
Looking down at her side, she noticed that her clothes had been torn and she had a large gash that had ripped her skin. Suddenly red chakra started bubbling around the area, healing her skin, almost instantly making her sigh in relief. Bissam stabbed the ground placing Samahata there as he flipped through hand seals. Suetan. Sarikan no Jutsu a large water dragon appeared in front of Kissam and shot at FK who was unprepared for the Jutsu, luckily for her, Kami was on her side as a voice called out. Oten. Dorakeki. The large wall of solid earth rose up in front of FK, shielding her from the might of the water dragon that slammed into it, causing water to splash over the area, some even getting FK. As the wall lowered FK saw something she would never expect to ever see, 14 Kanohe Shinobi lined up in front of her. Snapping out of her shock she said the first thing that came into her head. Who are you people? Bakashi looked back and I smiled. The Hokage was warned about sighting of Akatsuki in the area and we are here to help you out. He said as if it was nothing. Why would you help me? She asked bitterly wondering what their motive was. Let's just say we owe it to an old friend. Kiba said with a smile. Boo. She asked still suspicious of them. Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Kurinai replied making the Jinchuriki's eyes to widen. Hearing that name she automatically blushed. Naruto sure knows a lot of women hmm? She said with a suggestive tone in her voice before chuckling. Well, if you're all friends of Naruto-kun's, then you're friends of mine, besides, he's supposed to be here by now. Pissum looked at the group and realized he was in actual trouble, while he may be strong and confident, he wasn't stupid, sure he may take a few of them out, but at what cost? Hmm this could be trouble, I best be going now. He said as was about to use a shunshun to get away. Mokuten. Jubakuizum. Planks of wood shot out of the ground and curled around Kissam's arms and legs binding him where he stood, stopping him from getting away. You're not going anywhere fish face. Spoke a very familiar voice to the Kanohe shinobi. Everyone looked over to the side to see Naruto knelt down on the ground with his palm flat on the surface and staring at Kissam with narrowed eyes. It's about damn time. FK exclaimed with a glare. He's late because he had to go be heroic and save people from a slaver's camp. Kagura said as she dropped down beside Naruto with her scythe in hand. Ah, the Kayubi kid is here, last time I saw you, you was a scrawny little bastard. Kissam said with a feral grin, acting like he isn't even restrained, looking down at the wood his grin got bigger. So you can use the Mokuten, huh? He said with a smirk. Of course, or haven't you read the bingo book lately? Naruto said making Kissam scowl. What's the scowl for? You and Itachi break up or have a lover's spat. He said with a sympathetic tone while the others looked at him disbelief that he was taunting someone like Kissam. The guru chuckled and brought her beanie Akatakiyami, upwards. Say bye bye fishy. She exclaimed before charging her chakra up, causing storm clouds to appear in the sky while she called out. Kuroi Jetsue no Hidako. Swinging the Zanpakudo, a large bolt of black lightning soared towards Kissam, who looked up in shock as the bolt hit him creating a tremor all around the group to which they jumped back from. Did she get him? Hinata asked as she activated her by Akigen. I doubt it, he was probably a clone all along. Kakashi said looking around with his Sharingan out. Naruto looked around but couldn't see anything, closing his eyes he expanded his senses before he snapped his out into a part of the forest. Shinra Tensei. And just like that, part of the forest was blown away revealing Kissam with Samahada held in front of him protecting him. The Guru swung her Zanpakuto in a horizontal arc while black lightning danced around it and called out Kuroi Kaminari Kurisento Ha. The lightning from around it shot out like a crescent wave hitting Kissam dead on sending him back against a tree. Before Kissam could do anything he was interrupted as someone spoke in his head. Kissam retreat for now, you at too much of a disadvantage, we will retrieve the two Jinchuriki another time. Kissam sighed and attached Samahada on his back, confusing the group entirely. Well, looks like I've gotta go, I'll see you Kyubi boy some other time. He said with an evil cackle as he suddenly turned to water splashing the ground. Naruto seeing Kissam gone slammed his fist into the ground, causing a small crater. Damn it. The guru also sighed in annoyance and stabbed Bini Akatakiyami into the ground. Come on Naruto-kun. She said as she reattached her scythe to her back. Right. He also said while dusting himself off. Bakashi seeing everyone was alright, stepped closer to Naruto. Naruto. He said getting the blonde's attention who stood up and looked at him. Tsunade sama wanted to know if you were returning or not. He said. Naruto looked back to Kakashi and smiled slightly. Tell Tsunade I'll be there tomorrow, I still have some stuff to that needs doing before I plan on doing anything, he paused as he looked at FK who was looking at him in amazement. I should get FK back to Takigakur and to her brother Shibuki. He said. Takashi I smiled and gave a nod in acceptance and turned around to everyone else. Well, it seems like everything is alright here, we should head back now, Tsunade-sama would want to hear everything as soon as possible. 
everyone gave a nod and gave Naruto one last look before jumping away leaving Naruto to sigh in relief. Thank god, that was getting awkward with everyone staring at me. He muttered to himself. Oh yeah. Must be horrible having all the women look at you with lust. FK said sarcastically. It makes things fun if you ask me. Kagura said with a perverted grin on her face. Naruto looked at FK with a gentle smile. We should get to the village as soon as possible, your brother is probably worried sick for you. He said getting a nod from her as they started running. That night. Naruto when he returned with FK had been thanked profusely for saving her by Shibuki, who had practically hugged him to the point he almost died from being unable to breathe. He had simply told him it was no problem and it was his duty. Shibuki had then offered for him to stay for a while so he can rest up and get his things sorted out before he had to go back to Konoha and deal with the council. And now was the day when he was going to leave for God knows how long. Naruto stood at the gateway of the village that leads to the outside of the large tree with Kagura by his side like always, ready to go back to his old village that betrayed him, looking behind him, he saw FK and Shibuki seeing him off. Have a safe journey Naruto-san and Kagura-san. Shibuki said with a small bow. Thanks Shibuki-san, I doubt anything will happen though, Kano has not far from here. He said with a small smile, he then noticed FK's downtrodden mode and knew it was because he was leaving, he had known she started getting a crush on him but didn't want to pressure her into anything, so he had left it to see how things progressed. Walking up to her he reached into his pouch and pulled out a three-pronged kunai and held it out to her. If you ever need my help or in trouble, or if you just want to talk even, throw this at something and I'll be there within a moment's notice I promise. FK looked at the kunai in wonder never seeing something like and quickly took it in case he declined it and took it back, bowing to Naruto slightly she said. Thank you, Naruto-kun. Naruto chuckled and brought his hand under chin lifting her head up, leaning down a bit, he brought his lips to hers in a soft sensual kiss that almost made her faint while Shibuki tried not to pay attention to what was happening to his sister. Pulling back Naruto grinned at FK's dazed look. That's something to remember me by, hopefully when I see you again, it can last longer. He said with a chuckle as he waved to them both before leaving Kagura following with a small chuckle. Once Naruto was out of sight Shibuki looked at his sister who held the kunai tightly to her chest and chuckled. Looks like someone's in love. He said in a song-like voice making the girl blush brightly. Shibuki. She screamed as she chased after her brother who was laughing all the way. Hi no kuni. Hinoha. North Gates. The next day. Naruto looked at the gates with narrowed eyes, it had been four years since he was last here, since he was banished, and he still couldn't help but feel a little anger at those who mistreated him all those years ago, Kagura who was stood by him, looked at the village gates with also narrowed eyes for the treatment they had given her love. Starting on his walk towards the gate he was getting excited at seeing Tsunade again, Shikamaru too as he was one of his best friends, Kiba was also a best friend with a certain rivalry. He had also become good friends with Niji after the Chunin exam, as the Hayuga had become more social with people, now that he didn't believe in fate. Naruto came up to the gate and he noticed two guards at the gate booth relaxing. These two were Katetsu and Izumo, the pranking Chunins and Naruto's friends, two of the people who saw him for him and not the fox. When the guards noticed him they almost passed out at seeing someone back from the dead. Why yande masama? Izumo spluttered. Naruto groaned at that. Geez, I know I look like my dad, but I'm sorry to upset you, it's me Naruto. He said flashing them a grin. This time they did pass out from shock at having Naruto back in the village. Him didn't expect that oh well. With that he steeped over them and carried on his merry way to the Hokage Tower. Higura sweat dropped as Naruto just stepped over the guards but shrugged her shoulders and followed after Naruto as she really didn't want to get lost in a village, the last time she got lost in a village she ended up destroying a portion of it out of frustration with her Zanpakuto until she was kicked out of the village. Naruto as he was walking noticed everyone looking at him, women were blushing and pointing and men were glaring at him as they saw their wives and girlfriends look at him in lust. Yandame Sama has returned. He's back for redemption against us. Our hero is back. Wow, he's so handsome. I wonder if he'll have my children. Naruto groaned at the last comment. It's like everywhere else I go. Okage Tower. Tsunade Senju was currently sat behind her desk going through reports on sighting of Akatsuki in Fire Country lately, and she had a pretty good idea why they were here. Over the years she hadn't changed one bit, she was still the short-tempered woman that would fall asleep and get drunk, however it was less and less as the years went on. She was woken from her thoughts as she heard a knock at the door, now though she was confused, there were no teams, out, no missions ready, so the only possibility must be. Come in. She said with a little hope. Stepping thought the door what was some people may call a god among men, Tsunade had to hold back a drool and control her emotions. It was then she recognized the man, blowing all of her dreams and fantasies out of the water. Naruto. She asked carefully. Naruto chuckled and stepped forward. 
Yep it's me, I'm back for as long as you need me. He said with a soft smile as Tsunade's eyes widened to massive saucers. Tsunade had practically dove over the desk as she hugged the blonde to her, and what she found was, a strong muscled male, taller than her, and she loved every minute of it. Naruto placed his arms around the woman hugging her just as tight enjoying the feeling of being with Tsunade again, he was interrupted when he heard sniffing, looking down, he noticed Tsunade had a couple tears down her eyes. Wiping them away with his thumb as he held her cheek he asked. What's wrong? I'm sorry so sorry for banishing you. She said softly as she held on to him tighter. Naruto grinned as he stepped back while wiping the tears away. It wasn't your fault, and besides I think it was for the best. He said making her feel a little better as she pulled back then she noticed a red-headed woman, the room just got chilly, and Naruto couldn't help but gulp. I take it you're Kagura? Tsunade asked with narrowed eyes. The one and only. Kagura said while doing a dramatic bow she smirked and walked up behind Naruto hugging him. I'm one of Naruto's lovers and future wife. She said making Tsunade's eyes widen as she realized what she said. One of Naruto's lovers? She asked in shook. Naruto chuckled and waved a hand trying to defuse the situation. Well, I need to restart my clan, and as you know I'm able to have multiple wives to rebuild it. But we'll talk about that later anyway. He said calmly. Tsunade then went around her desk as Naruto and Kagura pulled chairs up to the desk and sat down. They look just like Minato and Kishina must be in the blood to like redheads. She thought to herself with a fond smile. So when will I meet with the council then? Naruto asked. Tsunade chuckled and looked down at her watch. Actually, not long from now, we'll most likely need you to be tested against various shinobi, just so everyone knows what you're capable of. She explained while getting a nod from the boy. That was when Shizune entered the office with some more paperwork. Tsunade sama I brought you the rest of the paperwork you need to fill out. She started to say but then stopped and dropped the papers on the ground when she saw the Yandame's clones talking to Tsunade. Her eyes were the size of dinner plates and her jaw hung from her mouth. Why Yandame sama Why you're alive? She stammers looking at the blonde-haired Adonis. Naruto and Tsunade blink and look her stumped form until he spoke up. Hey shizun chan I see you're doing well. He said while she blinks. And Naruto? She asks getting a nod in return. Oh my kami. Naruto. She cried out and glomped the blonde while crying her eyes causing Naruto to smile sadly before hugging her back. Naruto released Shizun and stepped back so she could see Kagura. shizun chan this is Kagura Enkai, Kagura, this is shizun chan he introduced while each eyed each other up. Hey. Kagura said with a slight wave. Hi. Shizun said with suspicion. It's nice to see you after so long Shizun chan you're looking beautiful today. He says making her look up and blush. Th thank you, you look handsome to Naruto-kun. She stated with a fond smile. Before anyone else can speak another voice spoke up. Well would you look at this. You're here for only a few hours and already making woman blush. The three turned to see Jiraiya leaning against the wall grinning at the sight. It's better than getting the shit kicked out of me like you do a lot. Naruto said chuckling while Jiraiya grumbled about blonde brats. So this is the pervert you told me about. Kagura asked Naruto while pointing a thumb at Jiraiya who looked shocked. Yep, this is him. Naruto said with a sigh knowing what was coming next. I'm not a pervert. Jiraiya said sounding indignant. I'm a super pervert. He yelled only to get drop kicked by Tsunade with a twitch in her eyebrow before sitting back down, leaving the twitching sage on the ground while Kagura chuckled and Shizun looked ashamed. Tsunade also chuckled and leant forward. So tell me, what have you been up to all these years? Later. With Naruto. Training Ground 7. Naruto was sat in down in the middle of a field in a meditative pose, legs crossed, eyes closed and Rikin Jaka laid flat along his legs while his he held it with both of his hands. We will start your Bankai training once the Orochimaru invasion is settled down, we must not allow any interruptions. I know, but it may be easier said than done, there's not many places that won't attract attention. What about that forest no one is allowed to enter? Ah the forbidden forest all I need to do is make sure Anko doesn't interfere, which may be easier said than done. Hell she will most likely want to join in. As long as we get the training done, then there is no problem whatsoever. You should get going to the meeting I doubt they will wait any longer. Right. Naruto's eyes snapped open as he came back to the normal realm before blinking getting his sight back to normal, standing up he sheathed his Zanpakuto and took out a book from his pouch with the title Loveless on the front. Opening it up here at a line out of it. When the War of the Beasts brings about the world's end. The goddess descends from the sky. Wings of light and dark spread afar. She guides us to bliss, her gift everlasting. My god admit I'm good at my work. He thought with a chuckle as he went to the council. Council chambers. 
Just like Tsunade said, everyone was in the meeting within the hour having got the notice that Naruto was back and willing to work with the village once more. They were only glad that Naruto didn't hate the village enough to work with Orochimaru even they knew they wouldn't win. It would be the Kaiubi attack all over again. Just then the doors opened up to reveal Tsunade and what they could only describe the Yandame reborn and what looked like a younger Kishina Yuzumaki. Once the three seat down Tsunade started things off. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze has returned to help us, he has also brought his partner Kagura Enkai, and you probably know her as Shijauhi Kaiho. She said causing gasps of surprise and shock, while Kagura chuckled and grinned reminding everyone of Anko. So that's the Rinnegan. Hmm, looks intense just from looking at them. Tsum thought while feeling a shiver run down her spine. Now that the demon Brad is back, I can finally make him my weapon. Danzo thought with sadistic glee. And that bitch will be used for breeding stock. And with the both of them we may actually come through this better than we expected. Shikaku thought with some enthusiasm. Tsunade who also enjoyed their wide-eyed looks and stammering, decided to get back on the issue and looked at Naruto. Naruto, do you know why we had asked you to return to Konoha? She said professionally. Naruto sighed and gave a nod. Yep, Orochimaru's finally making a move at Konoha, honestly I was wondering when it would happen. He spoke making the council tense knowing they had fucked up. Tsunade knowing this will start the meeting properly, also knew then still have to sort out Naruto's role in this. Before we get started, we should discuss Naruto's contract of employment. Very well. Inoichi said with a nod. So will you be reinstated as a Konoha shinobi? Hiashi asked with his usual stoic look plastered on his face. Naruto however shook his head. No, I still don't trust this village. He said making them look down. While I may trust my friends and certain other people, there are sides of the village that are too corrupt for me to just bounce back in, for now I'll just be a mercenary. Nodding his head Shikaku spoke up. And what are your terms? Naruto just shrugged. Honestly. Normal pays for whatever missions I do, I get the feeling I'll be sticking around while Orochimaru and Akatsuki is still out there, but basically just as if I was still a shinobi. Also I will only follow orders from Tsunade, no one else. That's fair. Choza said with a smile. What about your partner Kagura and Kai? Danzo asked with greed in his eyes while she felt sickened about thinking of what plans he had for her. Naruto narrowed his eyes and wrapped an arm around her. She will always work with me unless I say so, I don't trust anyone in the village when it involves her, especially people like you. We'll accept those terms as long as the majority are fine with it. Tsunade said while the clan heads gave a nod. Very well, as of now, you are a mercenary employed by Kanahagakur. But what do you mean Akatsuki? Shibi asked. He's probably already attracted them to us now. Danzo accused. Listen you old fossil. Naruto growled at him. Akatsuki are going to attack here whether you like it or not, it's only a matter of time, if they can't find me, they would eventually attack the place where they know I have some of friends. Naruto couldn't help but feel anger run through his veins just by looking at the old cripple, now that he knew everything he had done, well almost everything. What he did know was that he was to blame for what happened between Conan, Yahiko and Nagato, and if it wasn't for him, Nagato would never have joined Akatsuki. And that will draw you out in the open. Tsum said since she knew what it was like wanting to protect your pack. Yes. Naruto said with a nod. Akatsuki don't care who they kill, if they know by attacking Konoha will drive me out, then they will make sure they do as much damage as possible, and we all know that there is no way to stop them from breaching a village if they want to take Gara's kidnapping for instance. He said causing them to remember that despite all of Sunagakur's security and knowledge of Akatsuki, they still found their way into the village easily without anyone knowing until the last moment. Hmm, very well. Hiashi said acknowledging what he said knowing it to be right. What do you know of Orochimaru's plans? Tsunade asked Naruto. Not a lot. Naruto said with a sigh. But I do know he has a large force as well as Kabuto his right-hand man and Sasuke Uchiha. He said with a growl at the Uchiha's name. We can take this opportunity to get the Uchiha back. Kaharu said with a smirk. Naruto stared at them in disbelief as if not believing what was said. There is going to be an attack by Orochimaru and you're thinking about the getting the Ichiha back. What the fuck is wrong with you people? You would just let people die in order to get your precious Sharingan back. The Sharingan is invaluable. Hamura said with a stern gaze. Naruto laughed outright at that. That is fucking rich isn't it? How long have you all gone on with no Sharingan? And yet this village is still standing its power hungry people like you that end up destroying the village. He gazed before his eyes hardened into resolve. I promise you when I met the Achiha his head is mine, and anyone who gets in my way he trailed off as he held out his hand to a wall, confusing people until the entire wall was blown away. That will happen to you. He said directing his gaze at the three elders, but more precisely Danzo when he felt something coming from his concealed eye. 
why is chakra circulating to that socket unless it's not as useless as he wants people to think oh I got my eyes on you bastard. Understood, but what we need to do now is to test you and your abilities to see what you can actually and give the shinobi of the village an insight as to what you can do if they work with you. Tsunade said. Very well where and when. June in exam stadium, it will allow anyone to watch and gives the best room to fight and how about in two hours, will I inform everyone of what's going to happen? Tsunade said while getting a nod. Well that's all for now dismissed. Tsunade said while everyone gave a nod and left. And Naruto she said getting his attention. Dot your best, don't hold back. Later. But Naruto and Kagura. Naruto was walking down the main street on his way to the training ground, seeing as they didn't have much time left, Kagura was holding his hand while leaning on him, making all people around them jealous at what they each have. Naruto looked at Kagura and smiled at how peaceful she looked. You know for someone who has a high amount of bloodlust in a battle, you sure are a softie. He said with a chuckle as she slapped him on the chest lightly. All thanks to you, I've never felt at such peace before, I was always on the run before, having to kill to survive, I just got used to it, and then I received my Zanpakuto, it made me become accustomed to killing and sometime I enjoyed it. She said a little sad at the end. Naruto chuckled at her confession. Sometimes when I use the Kyuubi's chakra, I enjoy killing, although it's when I kill people like bandits, rapists and murderers. You shouldn't feel bad about it, for all you know, someone is alive because of you. Kagura smiled at Naruto's attempt to cheer up. Thanks Narukoi what are you going to do about Sasuke in the invasion? Naruto chuckled evilly. There's nothing to do except for the fact that I have to kill him, if he ever got Itachi's eyes, God knows what he will be able to do he would be the next Madara Chiha only more insane. Kagura smiled into his arm as they walked closer to the training ground. You better not lose by underestimating him, or you and my side will get very comfortable. She threatened. Naruto chuckled nervously at that threat. You know I won't lose, especially to him. He said with a smirk. Do you know who you will be fighting now? She asked since she didn't know anyone. Well for Tojutsu it will most likely be Mido Gai, since he's the best in Konoha, Jinjutsu will be Kurenai, I doubt anyone's as good as she is, Ninjutsu will most likely be Kakashi, I'll show him exactly what he missed out on, and Kenjutsu could be Yugao Yuzuki or Genma Shiranyi. You're not worried. She said more of a statement than anything. Not really, I'm confident in my skills and besides they know what I'm capable of from the bingo books. He said before they went to go start the test. Junin Exam Stadium. When Naruto and Kaguru got to the stadium they noticed everyone was there, Jenin, Chunin, Jonin, Anbu and even some civilians, along with the clan heads. Apparently the news about Naruto Uzumaki Namaka's being the Rikid Msenin heir had circulated throughout the village. Now they wanted to see the Rinnegan in action against some of the most powerful people in the village. Tsunade smiled seeing Naruto appear getting a nod from him to start she stepped forward. We are here today to test Namaka's Naruto and Tojutsu, Jinjutsu, Ninjutsu and Kinjutsu. Everyone cheered making Naruto a little startled that people are excited to see him fight. Will Mido Gai step forward please for the Tojutsu portion? Tsunade stepped back with the rest of crowd as Gai stepped up. Yosh. Naruto-kun it will be fun to test your flames of youth. The green spandex wearing man yelled making Naruto sweat drop along with everyone else. Naruto chuckled and said. It will be a blast going against you too. Giving the man a nod is sign to start. Naruto vs. Mido Gai. Guy then turned serious and dashed forward at speeds many couldn't follow, unfortunately for Guy, Naruto could follow. As Guy threw a punch at Naruto, he caught it effortlessly, but noticed the power behind it, as the wind and dust blew behind him from the force of the punch. Not bad Guy, but you have to do better. Bringing his right leg up, he kicked Guy in the face, sending him sprawling back until he put his hands on the ground to flip himself up. Naruto shot forward at faster speed and threw a punch at Guy, who barely dodged it by moving his head, but got a cut on his cheek. Guy repaid him in kind and grabbed Naruto's outstretched arm before pulling him down and kneeing him in the face, he then kicked Naruto up in the air, jumping up to hit Naruto. He never made it as Naruto regained his balance in mid-air and kicked Guy at the top of his head, sending him back down. Guy hit the floor hard but was back on his feet within seconds, in the air Naruto was coming down fast, Guy jumped out of the way barely before Naruto punched the ground, causing a massive crater to appear while a tremor struck the area. Guy taking the smart idea jumped back a good distance. That strength it was just like Tsunade Sama, however that was all him, no chakra whatsoever. Stance. Holy shit. Exclaimed Kiba. How in the world did he do that? Half exclaimed asked Tsunade. That was similar to my strength, only I need chakra added to do something like that. Kagura stepped up grinning. Naruto has trained his muscles for the past four years by using weights all the time, what you're seeing is just the beginning. It's like my sage mode strength. Jiraiya commented as he hadn't seen what Naruto is truly capable of. This is amazing. 
exclaimed Shizun as she hadn't seen anyone use strength and keep up with Guy, even with his weights on. I take it this is just the beginning. Tenten said sarcastically. Yash. Naruto-kun's flames of youth shine breather than ever. Yelled Lee causing Niji and Tenten to sigh at his antics. I don't think I've seen anyone match Guy before. Commented Kurinai. This is just starting Kurinai, I get the feeling they haven't even broke a sweat. Said Kakashi as he had put his book away for now. Fight. Naruto looked up at Guy who had an unusual serious face on him, and to Naruto, he just couldn't imagine this guy screaming about youth or the like. Guy, you're going to have to take your weights off if you want to beat me. It seems you are right. Guy responded, he had only taken weights off out of respect for an opponent worthy of it. Taking the weight from around his wrists and ankles he threw them to the side causing an earthquake. You should remove yours as well Naruto-kun. Said Guy as he wanted to fight at full power. Naruto gave a nod before he took off his trench coat and his shirt, he then threw them over to the side, causing a crater appear, while a tremor shook the ground, causing everyone's eyes to bug out, what were these people? Now Naruto stood topless with the necklaces around his neck, all the girls drooled at his ripped muscles, which kept flexing as he moved hell, even Tsune drooled a bit. Both fighters vanished from everyone's sights only reappearing when they either hit each other or dodged, every now and again craters would form on the floor, small craters but hell, they're making craters by punching each other, that's saying something. Whenever their punches connected with one another, everyone could feel the force coming from them, as they would get hit with wind ever so slightly. They were alerted when they heard a crash and saw Naruto picking himself out of the wall of the stadium. I got to hand it to you guy, you really are worthy of being called a tojutsu expert. Crossing his arms in an X formation he started pumping chakra through his body, making glyphs appear all over his body glowing bright blue. Stance. Ooh this is gonna get good. Said Jurei recognizing what Naruto was doing. What's he doing? Asked Tsunade a little nervous and anxious. That's Yandame Sama's gravity seal isn't it? Asked Kakashi making many go wide-eyed. Yep that's what helped Minato become the Kanoha no Kairoi Senk, Kanoha's yellow flash, it was his first step towards the Horation. Explained Jiraiya. I is going to have to release a couple of gates if he wants to remotely win. Said Kakashi. Fight. Gravity seal. Release. As soon as Naruto said that the glyphs oh his body pulsed before vanishing, everyone felt the sudden chakra hitting them softly and oddly calming. Before anyone could even blink Guy was sent soaring through the stadium wall, everyone looked back to see Naruto in the exact same spot, not even the dust had moved, a true testament on his newfound speed. Everyone just by looking at Naruto could feel the power oozing off of him, before anyone could say a word though there was a sudden blast of chakra, and the rubble that were around Guy were blown off. Hachiman came in. Kai. Hachiman Kickman. Kai. Naruto looked in the dust cloud that had picked up when Guy opened the two gates, when all of a sudden a blur appeared soaring at him, lifting his arm to block a kick he felt the strain on his arm, as the kick held a lot of power. Guy then kicked Naruto with his other leg sending him flying up, Naruto not expecting it didn't have time to block, the same going for the knee to the chin while he was still in the air. Guy then started kicking Naruto all over the place, much like Lee did against Gara in the Chunin exams, however, as Guy went for another punch his arm was grabbed, looking up he saw the smirking face of Naruto, before he was punched back into the ground making a crater. Naruto then fell back to the ground and flipped to land on his feet in a crouch, waiting for Guy to resurface. I eventually stood back up but in a relaxed pose and smiled at Naruto. You have certainly improved Naruto-kun, let's finish this with more attack. He said with cheerful yet serious manner. Ready when you are. Naruto returned crouching down slightly. The next second the both shot off towards each at inhuman speeds, as Naruto came close Guy threw a punch aimed at his head, only for Naruto twist under it and punch Guy in the gut with tremendous power. The Katsu. A second later Guy spat globs of blood out of his mouth before he blasted back against the stadium walls, creating a large indent of his body, before collapsing down to the ground in a heap. Tsunade appeared by Guy and ran a diagnostic jutsu over him and was relieved to find out he was okay just knocked out. A punch like that would have split a person in half and, yet I could tell he wasn't using all of his strength for that. Standing up she turned to Naruto who had a serious face on him. Winner by knockout Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Stance. Holy shit, what was that? Kiba exclaimed. It's a special technique he uses for a quick kill. Kagura explained. That was more than quick, but why is Guy still alive then if it was a killing technique? Yugao asked confused. Be thankful that Naruto was holding back, or the green spandex wearing Guy would have been split at the torso. Kagura said with a bloodthirsty grin causing people to back away. To think he had advanced so far in such little time, he truly is a prodigy of his time. Hiashi said with pride at his old friend's son. What's worse is that I doubt he would have improved this much if he had stayed within the village, well not since they'll want him at a certain level in case he snaps. Zoom said with a scowl. 
back with Naruto. People then saw all the cuts and scrapes on Naruto's sizzle up before completely healing, astounding them as no one had saw someone heal that fast other than Tsunade. So who am I facing next then? Naruto asked as he watched medics go over to Guy to tend to his wounds. Tsunade stepped forward as Guy was carried off of the field. Will Kuranayuhi step forward please for the Jinjutsu portion and Anko Midarashi for part Ninjutsu. She said with a smirk while Naruto grinned. Kuranai and Anko stepped forward and stood a few yards from Naruto, ready to get started at any second when Naruto spoke up. Let's see what you got Kuranai-chan, Anko-chan. Naruto said with a smirk as he got ready. You look worn out from your batch with guy there Naruto-kun. Kuranai said with a small smile. Naruto looks over himself to see dirt and wipes it off. You don't have to worry about me beautiful, just worry about yourself, same goes for you too Anko-chan. He said with a smirk while they blush at being called beautiful. Oh you're going down Gaki. Anko said taking a kunai out with Kuranai doing same before Anko shot forward at Naruto. Time for me to get some more of that delicious blood of yours. Naruto chuckled and pulled out his own kunai, only this was his Horatian kunai, which made Anko raise her eyebrows at. You have to cut me first. He exclaimed as he shot forward. Tsunade stepped forward as Guy was carried off of the field. Will Kuranai Yuhi step forward please for the Jinjutsu portion and Anko Midarashi for part Ninjutsu. She said with a smirk while Naruto grinned. Kuranai and Anko stepped forward and stood a few yards from Naruto, ready to get started at any second when Naruto spoke up. Let's see what you got Kuranai-chan, Anko-chan. Naruto said with a smirk as he got ready. You look worn out from your batch with guy there Naruto-kun. Kuranai said with a small smile. Naruto looks over himself to see dirt and wipes it off. You don't have to worry about me beautiful, just worry about yourself, same goes for you too Anko-chan. He said with a smirk while they blush at being called beautiful. Oh you're going down Gaki. Anko said taking a kunai out with Kuranai doing same before Anko shot forward at Naruto. Time for me to get some more of that delicious blood of yours. Naruto chuckled and pulled out his own kunai, only this was his Horatian kunai, which made Anko raise her eyebrows at. You have to cut me first. He exclaimed as he shot forward. And no. Junin exam stadium. Naruto vs Anko and Kuranai. Clangs of metal rang through the stadium as Naruto's Horatian kunai batted against Anko's regular kunai, as Naruto pushed against Anko, she grabbed his wrist and flipped over him to stab him in the back, only for him to roll out of the way and flip away, while chucking his kunai at the purple-haired woman. Anko ducked under the flown kunai and flung her own at Naruto's face, while she attached in wire to the ring edge, only for him to grab to it with two fingers before it touched him. Gonna gave to do better than that Anko-chan. He said in a mocking tune. Anko chuckled and bit on the end of wire and flipped through hand seals. Katen. Rick and no jutsu. Hot white fire exploded from her mouth shooting along the wire while burning the ground, but what she didn't expect was for Naruto to grin and throw the kunai in Kuranai's direction, redirecting the attack. Kuranai seeing the flames coming at her called out her own jutsu. Jinjutsu. Hanachiri Nuko. As soon as the words left her mouth her body exploded into pink petals which soon vanished. Naruto's eyes narrowed when he saw Kuranai vanish and concentrated clearly, a second later he spun around and grabbed a thin air, only to grab someone's hands. It was then revealed to be Kuranai who had materialized behind Naruto in a Jinjutsu to strike his back with a kunai. How? She asked eyes with shock at the fact he knew where she was. Naruto chuckled and pointed to his eyes. The Rinnegan can't see through most Jinjutsu with a bit of concentration, too bad for you though. He said with a chuckle before palm thrusting on her chest just as he flipped backwards over Anko who was about to stab him, landing behind her, he stabbed her in the back only for her to turn into mud. Tsuchi Bunshin no Jutsu. Pain. Nkakak no Jutsu. Spinning he came face to face with a large fireball that blew out of the real Anko's mouth, holding up his right hand. Shinra Tensei. An invisible blast shot forth from his hand and blew the fireball away as well hitting Anko, causing her to blown into a wall, making her cough up blood. Stance. Whoa, they're showing no restraint in this match are they? Ino said as she eyed the match. Not a lot of people can last long when these two are paired up together. Guy said as he had woken up not long ago. Huh? Why? Tenten asked confused. Teamwork. Kakashi said with a chuckle. They know each other's skills better than they do their own, they would work together where Kuranai would cast Jinjutsu and attempt to take the opponent out, Why Lanko would do the job while the enemy is incapacitated. Simple, yet effective. Niji said with a smirk. Yes, but I'm curious how long Naruto can last against them. Kakashi said. You think he can't win? Hinata asked with a frown. Well I don't know, I've seen Kuranai's and Anko's strategy work plenty of times, and I don't honestly know how Naruto is at reading people's tactics, so I guess we just have to see. I put my money on Naruto, I learned never to underestimate him once, I won't do it again. 
Kiba said with a smirk remembering his Chunin match against him. Kagura stayed quiet for a change watching her man do what he does best kick the shit out of those weaker than him. Height. All of a sudden he was constricted by vines tailing up his arms and legs as a tree sprouted up from behind him, forcing him to be tight against it while Kurinai appeared in front of him. Majin. Jubaku Satsu. Just as she was about to stab him Chakra was blown out of Naruto breaking the Jinjutsu as the tree and vines vanished. Sorry, Kurinai-chan. He said while she looked confused before he used his powers over gravity, he threw Kurinai against a wall, causing it to track under the pressure, a second later a voice called out. Sunate Jashu. Looking to his right he watched as a dozen giant snakes soared towards him, not giving him enough time to move, as they bit into his arms and legs pinning him in place, while one snakes hovered over his neck. Now what will you do Naruto-kun? Or will I finally have my blood I so dearly want? Anko said while licking her lips. Naruto tried to move his head only for the snake to move closer to the neck, making him stop when he noticed poison on the tips of the teeth. That shouldn't be a problem, Kaiubi should neutralize the poison, and if not, then the chakra from the Rinnegan will purge it. Naruto chuckled as he looked at Anko. Sorry Anko, but no blood from me today. But let me show you something I was taught from the Rakage Rate and no Yoroi. Yellow lightning shot out all around Naruto, causing the snakes grabbing onto him to start sizzling from the heat before they melted. Naruto cracked his neck and smiled at Anko. It's amazing isn't it, sending out Raten Chakra from every point in my body in order to improve my speed and reaction time to increase to near the speed of light, because of its speeds, it's impossible to predict moves due to the sheer speed at which the users move. But not only that, it increases the physical strength of its users by a factor of 5, making even the sharpest of steel weapons useless. Anko's eyes widened in shock seeing such a jutsu as lightning flickered all around Naruto while his muscles expanded, making him look like a sort of bodybuilder while his hair flipped about in the air. So the rakage taught you that? She asked in disbelief. Naruto chuckled. Oh yay, I trained with him for over six months before he finally taught me it, knowing I would need everything possible for the future, although this is my first time using it in a proper fight. He said as he clenched his fists causing lightning to become more potent and powerful there. Stance. He was taught by the freaking rakage. Tsunade asked Jiraiya in shock not believing it. I didn't know either Tsunade Haim. Jiraiya said in shock. Naruto and the rakage are almost like brothers, ever since Naruto saved four of their shinobi, with one of them being the Nibi no Bakaneko, he had offered to train Naruto, along with his brother Killer B, the Jinchuriki of the Hachibi no Kaijik, they had grown into a strange family bonding. Kagura explained in a rare serious tone. That boy always seems to surprise everyone. Genma said with a chuckle remembering the Chunin exams all those years ago. He wouldn't be in Yuzumaki otherwise. Ibiki said with a chuckle. Fight. Anko once more held up her hands and called out. Sunate to Jashu. Dozens of snakes shot forward at Naruto, only for him to grin at Anko, before he practically flew at her, causing all snakes to be killed when they come on contact with him, holding his left arm out to the side when he came close he yelled out. Rariado. His arm slammed into her stomach, causing her to be thrown back against a stadium wall, where she slid down bleeding from the mouth with a nasty gash on the back of head, while her clothes were torn where he made contact. Son of a bitch. She muttered as she tried to move but found herself unable. Throughout all this Naruto seemed to have forgotten about Kurinai who had recovered a while ago, so it was at this time when Naruto deactivated his lightning armor that wires wrapped around him restraining him completely. Don't tell me you forgot about me Naruto-kun. Kurinai said as from behind him as he tilted his head to look at her. Honestly I thought you were out of it for a while. He said sheepishly. Pain. Rika no Jutsu. Once more flames tore down the length of the wire at Naruto who simply sighed and called out. Shinra Tensei. A large force blew the wire from around him cutting them up as well as blowing the fire away and creating a crater underneath him. Turning around he held out his right hand at a shocked Kurinai and said. Bansham Tenen. Before Kurinai knew what was happening she lifted up off her feet and pulled through the air into Naruto's awaiting hand as a kunai was pressed against her throat. Anko's currently unable to move right and you're incapacitated, forfeit now. Kurinai sighed as she looked over at Anko seeing her straining herself from trying to move. Fine, I forfeit you win. She said with a sigh causing Naruto to smile while he let her down and pocketed his kunai. Stance. Well I'll be damned. Kakashi muttered before shaking his head in disbelief. He won. Sakura said with a small smile at seeing her old teammate defeating two jonins. Yash. Naruto-kun comes out victorious once more. Lee cheered for his friend. I wonder who he'll be facing next. Ino commented as she looked around at the possible candidates. I think yugao san is next for Kinjutsu. Shino said while pushing his glasses up his nose. This'll be good. Genma commented. Why? Kiba asked with a raised brow. 
Yu Gao is the top swordsman in the village, no one has ever been able to beat her before. Yamato said with a chuckle as he wanted to see how the Namikas fared against Yu Gao. Well, we'll see shortly I suppose. Back with Naruto. Tsunade had rushed to Anko to heal her, but found out that she wasn't too injured, the only reason she was unable to move properly was because of the amount of electricity forced into her body all at once. You should be fine Anko, you're not too injured badly. She as she called some medics over. Ah, tell that to my back, it's fucking killing me. Anko said with a groan as the medics picked her up and carried her over to where Guy was. Gurunai chuckled at her friend's antics and turned to Naruto. Good luck in your next matches Naruto-kun. Thanks Kurunai-chan, I may actually need it. He said with a smile, he could already tell he had used up about half of his chakra, he just hoped he could finish the ninjutsu portion of the test quicker. Kurunai chuckled and walked off to the stands to sit with the others, while Tsunade stepped forward. Now for the kenjutsu portion, your next opponent is Yugao Yuzuki. She declared while the long-haired purple woman stepped forward with her sword already displayed. I hope you show me a good time Naruto-kun. She said with a smile and blush realizing her innuendo. Naruto chuckled as he gripped Rikyun Jaka. Well, we're in a fight right now but maybe that can come later. He said with a smirk and a wink causing her to blush more. But it's good to see you after so long. Yu Gao smiled gently at him. And you too, I had actually planned to teach you in the ways of the sword after your mission to bring back the Achiha, but I'm glad you have taken up the profession. Naruto smiled as well. I kinda didn't have a choice, my katana is sort of an extension of myself, I guess you could say, so I had to learn kenjutsu. Yu Gao's eyes wide in hearing what he said. An extension. Does he mean what I think he means? Is your katana perhaps a Zanpakuto, by any chance? She asked making his eyes widen. You know of them? He asked her only to receive a nod. Whom I thought their knowledge would be lost over the years, or that they were a sort of myth. He said while she chuckled and shook her head causing her hair to become wavy, making her looking beautiful. They are a sort of legend but I sort of have my own Zanpakuto. She said holding up her own showing it to be a normal katana with a rectangular tsuba with inward curved corners, with curved slits above and below the blade, and a series of curved lines embossed on either side of the blade. It has a reddish-brown hilt. What's it called? Naruto asked while giving the katana a calculative eye. Yugao smiled fondly at her Zanpakuto. So no Shirayuki. Naruto chuckled before something clicked. That's why in the bingo book you're called Kanoha no Kumurai no Tenshi it suits you well. He said with a grin causing her to blush. What's your Zanpakuto called? She trailed off as Naruto pulled out his katana and she could feel the power coming off of it. Rikjin Jack and my pride and joy he trailed off as he settled into a stance as did Yugao. Well should we start? He asked as she gave a nod before both vanished. Naruto versus Yugao. Stance. What's that Zanapayoto thing? Ino asked saying it wrong. Zanpakuto. Jiraiya corrected. And I'm not entirely sure, all I ever heard were bits and pieces, like how they are formed from a fragment of your soul, they are like your lifelong partner that will always be there, as well as their sentient. Sentient? As in alive? Kurinai asked confused. Yes they're alive. Kagura said as she unstrapped her scythe from her back. This is my Zanpakuto, usually they have three stages, sealed state, shikai and bankai, the higher the state the more powerful, this is in its shikai form, for some reason I can't control it completely, and so it stays in this form whereas Naruto has much better control, and keeps his in its sealed state. However they're supposed to very rare and yet lately more people are getting them. She explained getting nods of acknowledgement. So, they said they have names for theirs, does your Zanpakuto have a name? Sakura asked. Yes they all have a name, it's what makes them unique from each other she paused as so she could stroke the scythe along the blade. And this is called Bini Akatakayami, Crimson Moonless Dawn. It sounds beautiful. Ino whispered in awe. And deadly to boot. Kagura chirped with a grin before looking back at the battle. Fight. They both met in the center of the stadium with swords clashed against one another, Naruto pushed against Yugao with more strength causing her to falter, to which Naruto took advantage and kicked her in the stomach and following up with another kick pushing her off her feet. Naruto ran at Yugao hoping to catch her in the air when she suddenly flipped to her feet and lashed out with a kick, only for him to block with his forearm, Yugao then flipped to bring her other leg up and grapple his arm before once more twisting around and kicking him in the face with the back of her heel. Blood shot out of Naruto's mouth from the strength of the kick as he was lifted off the ground, stabbing Rick and Jack in the ground he spun around in Yugao's direction and pulled his katana out of the ground and swung down on the purple-haired Anbu, only for her to block. Naruto pushed down on Yugao who fell down to one knee. Damn Naruto-kun's no slouch when it comes to strength to think he has grown to be such a man. Pushing up on her blade she quickly rolled out of the way causing Naruto to hit the ground where the sword cut into it like it was butter. Yugao taking the opportunity kicked Naruto in the ribs, leading him to flip through the air and crash into the wall. 
Is that all you got Naruto? Show me what you're really capable of. Naruto steps away from the wall while dusting himself off and smirks. Ask and you shall receive. He says as they exchange swords once more, for the next minute they both fought with everything they had, disappearing and reappearing when they could only to cause light shockwaves whenever they struck with stronger blows. As Naruto and Yuga rained down on each other, blow after blow they would continuously try and find a way past each other's defenses, only to counter against each other further on. A second later Yuga made for a slash at Naruto's neck, causing him to go wide-eyed, before his instincts took over, allowing him to tilt his head back, as he then flipped backwards by kicking off Yuga, causing her to falter while he landed a good distance away. Naruto panted as sweat trickled from his hairline mixing with the blood from the small cut above his eyebrow that Yu Gao had managed to get contact at the last second of dodging. Yu Gao also was panting as she sported multiple cuts, but she couldn't help the smile that came on her face. You know, when I heard I would be fighting you in Kinjutsu, I never expected a fight like this. She said with a chuckle which was shared by Naruto. I'm with you there, this is without a doubt the best sword fight I've ever had with anyone, then again the only times I did fight, the other person was practically fighting blind with a damn weapon. He said with a smile before straightening out. What Daya say we bring out the big guns? He asked with a smirk. Yugao shared that smirk and gave a nod. Only way to solve this eh? She said as she raised her Zanpakuto in front of her and turned it in a circle counterclockwise. While she was turning a chakra exploded out of her causing the air to become cold and fog to roll in, and what was even more strange was her eyes flashing wide every so often. Naruto also raised his Zanpakuto up in a horizontal position as chakra exploded out of him, causing a distortion the air around him as the area started heating up as flickers of fire came up off the chakra surrounding Naruto as the floor gained scorch marks. May, so no Shirayuki. Dance, sleeve white snow. White chakra exploded out of Yugao while picking up dust as the floor around her started turning to ice, while the surrounding area dropped temperature quickly. As the dust settled it revealed her Zanpakuto having changed to where the blade, hilt and tsuba turned completely white. The tsuba became a hollow snowflake-like circle, and a white ribbon forms from the pommel from the end of the handle. Anch miss I Kajin to Nace, Rikyun Jaka. Reduce all creation to ash, flowing flame blade. Fire engulfed the katana with such unnatural heat that the surroundings started to catch fire just from the intensity, the fire from around the katana grew and enveloped Naruto himself, creating a hazy image of a phoenix, while Naruto seemed to be in a state of peacefulness, as the fire shot up above the stadium into the sky, turning the once blue sky, red. Stance. Such power is unbelievable. Whispered Anko in awe at seeing the power roll off of then waves. Did you ever know Yuga was this strong? Ibiki asked Kakashi as he could sense her chakra levels reaching heights he didn't know she had. Kakashi however shook his head, even when he was in Anbu and on the same team as the purple-haired woman he had never seen this side of her before. No this is my first time as well. Hey have you guys noticed she looks happy? Haruka asked as they looked at her closely. Yeah, I've not seen that smile since Kurinai started not really wanting to go there. Hey. Genma however was fine with saying his name, despite being best friends with the man. Maybe because she hadn't been able to go all out before. Jiraiya commented which got some nods. Naruto's really is powerful. Niji whispered in awe. Ooh, they're fighting it out now. Ino said in excitement causing everyone to pay attention. Fight. Naruto opened his eyes slowly while lowering his Zanpakuto slightly to view Yugao's Zanpakuto and couldn't help but admire the beauty of it. That's a truly beautiful Zanpakuto, Yugao-chan. He commented bringing a smile on her face. Yugao also gazed at Naruto's burning Zanpakuto and how the flames traveled up his arm almost to his shoulder and could feel the intensity of it, and not just in the heat sense, but in the power of it, how it seemed to bring a sense of calm over her, despite the nature of it. Your Zanpakuto is quite intense, I've never seen such a thing like it before. She said with a small smile. Naruto chuckled and brought Rick and Jack a backward in a reverse grip. Why don't we see which is the stronger? Fire. Or ice. Let's. She exclaimed before following his example. Naruto brought his blade up in a swing while calling out. Hifuki no Kizuchi. Fire blowing gavel, an incredible amount of fire burst from the top of the blade as it soared across the battlefield, burning everything in its way from the intensity of the heat, while also causing all viewers to start to sweat from the heat generated. Sugi no Mai, Hakurin. Next dance, White Ripple, at the exact same time, Yugao called out the name of her own technique as she punctured the ground, once creating a large eye circle underneath her feet, and then following up by puncturing the ground in front of her four times in a semicircle. She then took a battle stance as the ice particles begin to flow up from the protrusion she made in the ground. Building up some more, she gathered them at the tip of Sod no Shirayuki's blade, then fired an equal amount of ice at Naruto's fire attack. 
As the two attacks came into contact with each other, they fraught against each other as Naruto and Yugao poured more into the attack as they started to grow larger and larger. Seeing the imminent danger both shinobi jumped back as the joined attack exploded sending fire and ice everywhere. Jumping backwards more Naruto planted his feet on the wall and pushed off as hard as he could causing cracks to appear as he flew at Yugao, passing through the smoke from the previous attack, he came out on the other end with Rick and Jack in a reverse grip once more while Yugao stood in a defensive posture. Flipping forward he landed on his feet in a crouch position and aimed the point of his Zanpakuto at Yugao and called out. Rayenden. Lightning fireballs, several fireballs shot out of the tip of the blade at Yugao, who hastily stabbed the ground with so no Shiryuki she called out. Juhaku. White tree, ice shot out of the epicenter of the stabbing to meet head on with the fireballs as the ice grew higher, forming something akin to a wall, causing the fireballs to impact with it creating one more explosion. Just as Yugao was going to attack Naruto, she found herself pinned to the wall behind her with a sealed state of rich and jacka at her throat. Looking down she could only look on in shock as Naruto stood there with a smirk on face, Zanpakuto in his right hand and Kunai in his left, pointing at her stomach ready to stab. How? She asked in shock. Naruto grinned while his eyes danced with amusement at seeing her shocked state. While you were observing the explosion I used one of my Horatian seals that I placed on you earlier when we're battling out like crazy and because of all of the fog and smoke, you didn't see me flash here. He explained with a cool gaze as he stared down at her. Amazing. She whispered in shock realizing he could probably have won at any given time. Well, I guess I have to forfeit this match, you definitely won Naruto come. She said as she resealed her Zanpakuto. I would love another rematch some other time Yugao chan. Naruto said as he sheathed his Zanpakuto and pocketed his kunai. Yugao chuckled at that. Oh you can count on that Mr. Namikas. She said with a smirk before she limped back to the others. Stance. Now that was a match I would have paid to watch over and over again. Kiba said with a grin. He certainly has earned his rank. Soom said with a lusty tone. As long as he stays on our side, I'm alright. Inoichi said with a chuckle. He has the same determination as his parents, they would be proud of him. Hiashi said with a smile. Isn't it your turn now Kakashi? Kurinai asked with a grin seeing the copy Nin sigh sadly as he looked down at Battle Arena. I suppose so huh? He asked rhetorically as he started to descend the steps. Back with Naruto. Naruto had just finished healing himself off to the point where you could see that his chest and back didn't have a spot of dirt on, well he may get hurt more now seeing as he's only in his pants and shoes, with his Zanpakuto strapped to his belt and necklaces dangling from his neck. Tsunade stepped forward for the last time. For the final round, the ninjutsu portion, Kakashi Haddock, you're up. Tsunade stepped off once more, while Kakashi lazily walked up book in hand. Kakashi looked up at Naruto from behind his book and saw the look of seriousness and decided to put his book away for now, as he knew it would piss Naruto off now and the fact he knew Naruto would destroy it, something even he wouldn't chance. Kakashi knew that this could be the most trouble he had ever had, as he knew Naruto would have a lot of ninjutsu in his arsenal, considering he has the Rinnegan which allows the user to be able to learn any jutsu. There was also the fact that he didn't really know what to do jutsu-wise, if Naruto can just absorb them all, yet this was going to be one of the hardest fights ever. And to think he neglected them all those years ago for a spoil to Chiha what a fool he was. I guess I'm going to have to get serious here. Kakashi said as he pulled his headband up revealing his Sharingan making Naruto smirk, glad he wasn't underestimating him. That depends on if you want to survive. Naruto said with a smirk. Naruto vs Kakashi. Stance. Who do you think will win? Asked Chaoji. I put my money on Blondie. Anko said with confidence. Why are you so confident in him? Kiba said with a frown. Because I already got my ass kicked by him, as well as everyone who's faced him, so it's only right he gets his ass wiped too. She said causing some snicker. Yamato who was listening and decided to comment. This could go either way while Naruto has the jutsu and the strength and possibly the speed that can beat Kakashi Senpai, Kakashi Senpai also has a lot of jutsu and much more experience. Come on exclaimed Anko as she now stood next to Kurinai. Naruto has experience, probably more than any of us, he's been fighting for his life ever since he was banished, and he was trained by the fucking Rakage and God knows who. She exclaimed in frustration, knowing Naruto was stronger than he had shown. Kurinai chuckled. He could probably take us all out if he wanted, he's a one-man army. She said clearly. Kagura chuckled. Don't worry, my boy will take care of Kakashi easily. Your boy? Ino asked with a raised brow. Kagura smirked. Oh yes, he's all mine and I mean all. She said punctuation the all making her go wide-eyed as well as some women. They're starting. Said Shikamaru hoping to defuse the situation. They all then looked back at the two who went through hand seals. Height. Pain. Murka no jutsu. 
Out of Kakashi's mouth came an enormous dragon that twisted into the sky before rushing at Naruto with intense speed, which was giving off enough heat that everyone could feel it. Suiten. Sujin Heki. The water molecules in the air then formed a very powerful wall of water that surrounded Naruto, blocking the fire dragon as it hit, even though the dragon had hit the wall and was now gone Naruto, then put his hand in a seal before yelling. Suiten. Suriken no Jutsu the wall of water then swirled from around Naruto so that it turned into a dragon in front of him with blazing yellow eyes, it was then sent soaring at Kakashi, who just barely dodged out of the way before it hit the ground and surprisingly made a crater. You're very good at your suiten manipulation. Kakashi complimented Naruto who grinned. Oh fighters then went through the same hand seals and yelled. Katen. Kakak no Jutsu. Both of them inhaled sharply before the blew a large ball of fire at each intending on defeating the other, however, instead of blowing up, they turned into more of a flamethrower which batted against each other for strength. Naruto discreetly made a clone without the use of hand seals, as he had used them so many times it was natural to him, the clone went through a couple hand seals before shouting. Ton. Atsugai. A miniature tornado shot out of its mouth and merged with his fireball which overtook Kakashi causing an explosion, sending them both back. Kakashi flipped upright before jumping into a tree with his back to it and working on a tactic. Naruto seeing Kakashi missing knew he had gone into a tree but which one? Grinning he put his hand in a seal before slamming his hand on the floor and calling out. Ikazuchi Hakai. Lightning poured out of his hand which then shot along the ground towards the tree lines which cut through the ground breaking up the lightning, then hit a tree and blew up, causing many more trees to go down with it, however no Kakashi. Stance. Everyone stood gaping not believing this was the dead last who they used to make fun of, now this was a real shinobi who could kill. Who would have thought Naruto would become this strong? Niji mused. The guru snorted. You guys haven't seen anything yet. Fight. Bakashi seeing the potential danger if he kept hiding, decided to charge Urakiri in his hand, jumping from the tree line still in midair he thrust his hand forward like a whip and out of it came a massive dog in the form of lightning. Naruto seeing the danger put both hands forward and said. Jutsu kicken. It was then though that the lightning hound hit the barrier that had been found and was slowly being absorbed into Naruto. Bakashi seeing the jutsu being absorbed was impressed, he knew it could absorb any jutsu as he seen before, but to see it absorb his jutsu was still fascinating. Stance. Whoa. Exclaimed Ino amazed that Naruto actually absorbed the jutsu. He really can do that. Whispered Sakura in shock since she had not seen it before. Shino pushed his glasses up his nose. My bugs are very afraid of him his chakra is apparently too large and it frightens my bugs. He said shocking them at the fact someone having too much chakra almost seemed laughable. He just keeps getting more troublesome. Muttered Shikamaru although he wouldn't outwardly admit he was impressed with Naruto as it was too much energy. Who would have thought the council actually banished him, it's a good job he still sees us as friends or we would be fucked. Said Kiba who kind of pointing out the obvious. Hana his sister smacked him upside the head. Wait to point out the obvious runt. She then looked at Naruto's soaked body from when he used the suit in jutsus. But I wouldn't mind a piece of him. She said licking her lips while Kiba's eyes widened in shock while his mother Tsum smirked. I'm with you there. She said also licking her lips. Kiba fainted. The guru chuckled and eyed Hana and Tsum before saying. I'll have him take you up on that offer. Both Inuyasukas snapped their heads to her to see her wink at them, so what did they do, they grinned and winked back at her. Fight. Naruto smirked as he looked at Kakashi's astonished look, he loved it when people had that look once he'd done something amazing. Naruto held out his right hand where chakra started to gather. Let's see you handle this one. Shinra Tensei. Before Kakashi knew what was happening an invisible force blew the entire field in front of him, sky high, along with a few trees in the arena, he barely had time to dodge before the force clipped his shoulder, sending him flipping away. Give up. He taunted. Stance. Now that's what I'm talking about exclaimed Kiba who was grinning like a madman at seeing the power that attack held. He should have used more power for that. Kagura muttered but audible for everything to hear. What do you mean Kagura-san? Asked Hinata. Shinra Tensei is a jutsu that varies on the amount of chakras put into it, what you saw was a basic version of it, should Naruto-kun want to, he could probably destroy Konoha by putting much more into that attack. He used it a lot on our travels to wipe out bandit camps quicker. She explained shocking them at how powerful that jutsu really is if he ever wanted it to be. Fight. Bakashi got up on his feet a bit battered up, but smirked as he wanted this fight to last a while at least. Not a chance I still have some tricks up my sleeve. Kakashi then put his arms in an X formation before Chakra started pouring out of him as he shouted. Hachiman Kamen. Kai. Veins started popping out the top of his head as his Chakra started to rock the ground, causing stone and dust to levitate as he yelled. Hachiman Kickman. Kai. 
Just when Naruto thought that was it, Kakashi's skin changed color slightly before the ground beneath him cracked and shouted. Hachiman Saman. Kai. Naruto looked shocked, he thought Kakashi could only open one or maybe two, seems he wasn't the only one who had been training. He barely came out of his shock as he noticed Kakashi had disappeared. OSH, he wasn't able to finish as he was sent tumbling away before being kicked back one more. He was then kicked upwards, and just when he thought he could regain his bearings, Kakashi appeared behind him and wrapped his arms around Naruto and spun extremely fast straight to the ground, causing a crater and a mushroom cloud picking up, Kakashi however had hoped away before Naruto hit the ground. Stance. They all stood in shock at what Kakashi had done no one knew he could go so far with the gates, never mind his strength he hit Naruto with. Is he dead? Kiba asked a little worried for Naruto, but also got a smack on the head by Hana. Of course he isn't Baka. She said glaring at him for even suggesting it. Tsunade looked at the crater in worry, she knew how powerful that move was, and by the size of the crater along with no movement, she was about to go check when Jiraiya grabbed her shoulder causing her turn around, he could see the worry and couldn't blame her, then again she didn't know what he was truly capable of. Calm down Tsunade Haim, he's fine. Tsunade frowned at him. Jiraiya that could have killed him, I have to stop this. Jiraiya gripped her shoulder tighter to keep her from turning around. Tsunade Naruto has to do this he has to prove himself. Tsunade frowned, she knew what he meant by that, however others didn't. Prove himself for what? Asked Shizun who stood close by. Tsunade looked back at the crater that was slowly being visible. Naruto has been put down all his life by his peers being told he was too weak or he wasn't fit to be a shinobi, by fighting Kakashi and winning, it proves to everyone here that he isn't the same Naruto anymore. The fact that Kakashi neglected him as well is more of a told you so Naruto is hoping for. Sakura who stood by frowned at the Kakashi neglecting Naruto statement. Kakashi never neglected Naruto he taught us loads of things. Jiraiya frowned at the pinket. Really? What did he teach you all? Sakura looked up at the Gama-san and confused. He taught us all we know, he taught Sasuke a lot of Katen Jutsu and even the Chidori. She said if it was the simplest thing. And what did he teach you and Naruto-kun? Kurenai asked who was also listening in to the conversation. Sakura thought and couldn't think of anything useful that he taught them, after Sasuke left Sakura worked under Tsunade and Naruto was banished, left to survive on his own. Jiraiya smirked as he was glad Sakura understood. Good you understand, Naruto wants to show Kakashi what he missed out on by showing him his power. All of Naruto's friends let those words sink in and realized Naruto had to do this to show everyone he truly was the son of the Yandame, but more importantly that he was Naruto Uzumaki Namika's. Fight. I got to admit said Naruto as he stood up from the crater with some cuts on his chest from the rocks, with blood dripping down from his hairline, his pants were also torn a little. I really didn't expect you to release three gates. He said chuckling before he paused and looked at Kagura in the stands. It's you who suffers from that. Not me. So, ha. Huh. He shouted childishly while everyone blinked owlishly but nearly face faulted when Kagura shouted back. Fuck you. Women. Naruto muttered to himself before putting his game face on. Naruto then crossed his arms. Looks like I'll have to take this seriously, gravity seal. Release. Chakra exploded from him as the ground crumbled under him. I'm not finished yet. Focusing Chakra through his body sparks started to come off of his skin like static before he shouted. Right no your way. Lightning blew out from Naruto completely enveloping his skin, unfolding his arms he held them up chest level and unclenched his hands and watched his lightning dance around his fingers. Bakashi smiled at Naruto he had really come far, the worst thing though was he knew Naruto could do more if he wanted to kill him, and he had no doubt he could to be honest. I'm impressed Naruto you really have gone far. You've seen nothing yet. Naruto said with a smirk, holding up his right hand lightning started to dance around it until he shouted. Head number 63. Rakem. A large amount of yellow lightning fired from his palm aiming at Kakashi at breakneck speed before he sued his new speed to get out of the way where the blast then hit the ground, ripping it apart as it tore through the earth. Bakashi raised an eyebrow at the damage and chuckled. I doubt I have much strength left for the match. What do you say? One last move. He asked Naruto. One last move. Naruto agreed as he too was feeling weakened from the constant fights. Bakashi then flipped through a few hand seals before his right hand gripped his left arm's wrist before lightning started crackling, and then there was a massive surge that started shooting all over the place. Naruto also held out his right hand as Chakra started swirling around creating a bright blue ball, a second later it started to turn light blue as wind started to gather, creating a four-pointed shuriken-like shape started forming around the ball. Both shinobi shot off at each other, leaving a small crater behind where they stood, as they got close they cocked their hands back and thrust forward. Tan. Rasengan. Rikiri. 
Both jutsu clashed causing a massive flash of light, followed by an explosion that ripped the ground up around them as a crater started forming with the rocks jutting upwards. The flash let down before another occurred, and two forms flew out of the smoke and landed on the grounded heart as they kept rolling a bit. With everyone. Tsunade ran for Naruto and slid down next to him, rolling him over so he lay on his back, she laid her palms on his chest as they glow green using a diagnostic jutsu. He looked like he had been in a war, his pants, the only remaining clothing on him beside his boots, were torn to the point that you could see his black boxers slightly causing Tsunade to blush slightly, which was unnatural for her. He had cuts all over his body and arm which she was currently trying to heal. Sakura also did the same with Kakashi who was worse off, his entire left arm had been scorched and bruised, tears and rips had appeared in his clothes, he was definitely beat up as he looked like shit. The entire crowd stood in shock at what had happened, Naruto had more or less beaten Kakashi, what's worse is the fact Naruto barely used any of his jutsus that he has, including his Rinnegan jutsu that can level a village. Never mind the fact he had beaten some of the top shinobi that they have to offer. Naruto blearily opened his eyes but shut them quickly as the sun hit them, opening them again he came into the side of Tsunade smiling down at him. So how'd I do? He asked her. Tsunade smiled at him proudly, even though he could do much more it was still impressive. You did great but why didn't you use any of your other jutsus like your Rinnegan ones? She asked as she was curious about them. Naruto chuckled. They're too dangerous plus didn't want everyone to know all about me now do I? He asked rhetorically. Tsunade shook her head at him, if she was honest with herself, she wanted to see how powerful he really was, she looked down at his chest and noticed all of his cuts healed showing a perfect body, one she would die for on a man. Snapping out of her thoughts she helped Naruto up whom then went over to pick his clothes up from a crater they had formed earlier, he then put his shirt and trench coat on much to the dismay of many women. Tsunade looked over to Sakura who was now lifting up a conscious Kakashi, who looked pretty damn beat up from the looks of it, she smiled inwardly, and Kakashi didn't even have a real battle with Naruto, and look at him now. Tsunade looked at Naruto with a smile and said. Come to my office tomorrow, I already have a mission I want you to check on, I'll also have your team ready there as well, and I understand that Kagura will be going as well. Naruto gave a nod and left the field with Kagura to go get some sleep in a hotel. The Togakur. Underground Lab. Arachimaru was stood within one of the many, many labs underneath his own village, stood before him was the best apprentice he could have ever asked for, Sasuke Kachiha, his right-hand man Kabuto Yakushi. With them were two supposedly dead shinobi, Teiya and Kamimuro Kagaya. Sasuke had come leaps and bounds ever since he left Konoha, his already impressive speed saw a huge leap, allowing him to move huge distances in the blink of an eye as if teleportation. He also greatly increased his speed at making hand seals, being able to do many in a blur and launch an enormous amount of weapons just as quickly, which had been proven when he had been ordered to kill countless shinobi as a test. He has learned to control his emotions in a complete calm state when fighting his opponents to be able to calculate the most effective way of destroying them despite their abilities. He had improved exponentially with his Katen and Raten to the point where he can use Shidori to emit throughout his entire body and many more Katen Jutsu without using much chakra, thanks to the more advanced chakra control. The Sharingan had also improved to the point that just with eye contact, he can place anyone in a Jinjutsu before they actually realize, his reactions had also improved where he can dodge almost all attacks, unknown to Orochimaru, though is that Sasu can control a creature like Manda by using his bloodline without having to offer anything for his services. By all rights Orochimaru would place him as a borderline s rank shinobi and would be much stronger if he was able to gain the Magicum Sharingan. He had also changed his outfit now to wearing a white long-sleeved shirt which was open at the torso, with a smaller version of the Achiha crest on his collar. He wore black pants with a blue cloth hanging from halfway up his stomach to his knees. He also wore a purple rope around his waist, tied in a bow. He also had a sword now, or rather is Anpakudo, the weapon of choice was a when sealed, it takes the form of a white Sakabato, reverse-edged sword, with a cross guard, looking like three lightning bolts, converging at the point where they meet the blade and hilt. The Budo however was the same person as always, only more he now had his own plans to gain more power like had always wanted, all he needed was time. Aya however had turned into a beautiful woman, she was now five. Six feet, her red was flown down her back with two tufts either side of her face, with a strand dangling between her eyes, and she wore a hat on her head like all those years ago. She wore black sandals, black slacks and a low-cut white tank top with a red phoenix spreading its wings on, while displaying her stomach clear as day. Over her tank top she wore a small black jacket the same size as the top. She now had a different weapon to her flute, which had been destroyed which she replaced with a katana with an H-shaped suba and white weaving around its hilt. Years ago she was completely loyal to Orochimaru, but nowadays she would take any opportunity to get away from the man or creature, whatever the hell he is, as long as she would be safe. 
The Mimro hadn't exactly changed all that much, except for getting taller and more buffed out, thanks to his bloodline as it had evolved. Now that his illness had been cured, he had become a more formidable opponent. Orochimaru looked up at his strongest shinobi in his force. In seven days we will launch a full-out attack on Konoha, Sasu Kanteaya, you will attack from the north gate, Kabuto you will attack from the west gate, and I will attack from the east gate. Also I've hired someone that will help us in our invasion, he will meet you Kabuto, but will most likely be a bit late. Also Kamimro, I want you at the north gate at a later time, Gurin will accompany you, but she will be sent to the west gate. Sasuke smirked. Konoha will finally burn, I can't wait. Well, at least you've grown some patience Asuke-kun. Kabuto commented with a smirk of his own. Orochimaru chuckled as he pulled out a book. It may not be that easy Sasuke opening a page in the book he held it to Sasuke. Read that. Sasuke scoffed and took the book and started to read it along with the other three. Name. Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Age. 18. Hair color. Long blonde hair with black highlights. Eye color. Rinnegan. Alias. Shinku Senko, Crimson Flash. Height. 6'2". Weight. 125. 215 pounds. Heritage. Minato Namikas, Yandame Hokage, and Kashina Yuzumaki, Red Death. Rank Class. S Rank. Skills. Exceptional to Jutsu, an Injutsu monster, master Kinjutsu artist, quite skilled in Kinjutsu and a chakra powerhouse, never known to run out of chakra, can't see through most Jinjutsu. Bloodline. The Rinnegan, descendant of the Rikid Msenin, allows the wielder to use all element manipulation. Nature Affinities. Katen, Suetan, Futen, Raten, Doten, Mokuten, Heimten, Shimtan and Gravity. Wielder of the Rasengan and the Horatian no Jutsu. Ginchuriki of the Kaiubi no Yoko. All four of them had their eyes wide as saucers at reading that not believing the blonde midget from four years ago to actually be that strong. Isn't that the blonde little shit who used to spout off about being Hokage all the damn time? Teaya asked with a shocked look. The very same Teaya chan however he will never become Hokage anymore now. He spoke with a smirk. Huh? Why? Kabuto asked confused. He was banished four years ago for failing to bring Sasuke back to them, and recently they have hired him a mercenary to help fight against us and Akatsuki. Sasuke's face was full of anger, he had thought with all of his training he would be far past Naruto and would never be seen as the weaker one ever again, now that he had read this, he realized how delusional he really was, he would only have to fix this by killing him. He is of no problem, I'll kill him. He said with anger visible on his face. Aya looked at him in disbelief, she knew he was probably the strongest other than Orochimaru, but even she wasn't stupid enough to underestimate someone with a record like that. Still though I can't believe this is the same midget from four years ago I wonder she stopped thinking to get any hopes up. Orochimaru chuckled. I'm sure you will Sasuke-kun, but don't underestimate him, you've done that one too many times. Remember seven days from now we attack. He said getting nods from everyone as they left. Let's see how much you've improved Naruto-kun, with a Rinnegan you could possibly have unlimited potential within you just like pain, he thought to himself with a manic chuckle. On Hagakur. Invasion Day. Naruto's Apartment. Ever since the testings had been hectic, like for one Naruto and Kagura had been sent out on missions with various teams to reintegrate with them to get a better understanding of how all the teams work, the people who Naruto and Kagura like working with the most though is Kurenai, Yugao and Anko, it was like the perfect team for all kinds of mission. Naruto and Kagura were the powerhouses that create all the destruction and killing, Kurenai would be the one to create Jinjutsus to confuse the enemy and make them fall into traps easier, Anko would be a demolitions expert or the interrogator, and Yugao would be the stealth one, gaining information quicker without having to create a ruckus. And what was better was they had all begun hanging around each other more lately, they would go the bar at night to drink, Naruto would flirt, but always go back home with Kagura, much to the other female's annoyance, they would even eat out together. They were quickly becoming fast friends, and Naruto had some hope that when he had to leave, they would come with him, not that he would force them or anything, but it's nice to have people you could relate to, and by relate, he means how they are lonely in some way. No one would go out with Anko with her being the former apprentice of Orochimaru, the village had some serious trust issues. Yugao had lost her only lover in the Suna Odo invasion and hadn't been with anyone since, and Kurenai simply couldn't find a guy who wanted to be with her for and not her looks. So if things went to plan, then Naruto would hopefully have more people on the road. Except now was no time for thinking about all that, today is the day that Orochimaru would strike, along with Kabuto and Sasuke Chiha. Just the day before, Gara had arrived alongside Tamari, Kankerman and Mitsuri as the main force with battalions of Suna Shinobi. It had been a fun sight to see the usual stoic Gara smile at Naruto and give him a man hug after not seeing each other in a while. 
it was even more fun to see Tamari hug the dear life out of Naruto while ignoring the female's dark auras that shot up around them as soon as the Suna Kunoichi even entered Naruto's personal space. Bold plans had been made about how the battle would go, there were only three entrances into the village, the North Gate, East Gate and West Gate. At the North Gate Naruto, Kagura, Kurinai, Yugao and Anko as well as many shinobi would defend that gate where they had Intel Sasuke Chiha attack from that side with numerous shinobi. At the East Gate, Tsunade, Jiraiya, Sakura, Teammate as well as their own large force would confront Orochimaru there once and for all. And at the West Gate, Kakashi, Team 10 and Team Guy would confront Kabuto and his merry band of thieves, various shinobi such as the clan heads and the like were placed all over the place to batter defend their home, they only hoped everything went to plan as if. Right now though, shinobi all around the village were preparing for battle, the last time Orochimaru attacked they were completely caught off guard, but not this time, this time they would destroy him. They only hoped they wouldn't lose someone in the battle. In Yuzuka clan compound. Fiba stepped out of the clan house, flanked by Akamaru, Tsum in Yuzuka and Kurumaru, Hana in Yuzuka and the whole in Yuzuka clan. But look pup. Tsum told Kiba with a smile. Don't worry ma, these guys won't know what hit them. Kiba said with a smirk. Hana smacked him over the head. Don't get too overconfident brat. Sorry. Kiba said scratching the back off his head. It's just that after seeing how strong Naruto was I want to be like that. He said with a sigh. Well, all people ever want from you is to do your best, but if you keep comparing your skills to someone else, nothing good will ever come from it besides I'm proud of you as it is. Tsum said with a fond smile. But I'd best be going teammate is situated at the east gate to confront Orochimaru. He said as he started to walk away with Akamaru before turning back. And thanks ma don't die on me. You neither sis. Hana chuckled and smiled. Just do your best oh and if you see Naruto come, give him a kiss from me. She shouted the last part as Kiba had started running only for him to trip and splutter leading the others to laugh. Aburam clan compound. Shino and his father Shibi left the compound house along with the rest of the clan to get ready for the battle that is sure to come on their doorstep. Be careful out there Shino. Shibi cautioned his son only to get a nod. I will father. Good, don't hold back, give them everything you have got. I will make sure the enemy doesn't leave Kanoha father, it would be best I met up with my team. He said getting a nod from his father before he jumped away. Shibi sighed as he looked at the sky. Look after my son. He whispered to thin air. Hyuga clan compound. The Ashi, Hinata and Hanabi along with most of the main house and branch family were outside of the clan, ready for the foolish Odonan that will attack them. Hinata. Hiashi called out to his eldest daughter who turned around to look at him with a determination he had only ever seen in her mother. I know I haven't been the best father, but I am proud of the woman you have become your mother would equally as proud as I am. He said shocking her and her sister who had rarely heard him say anything nice. Thank you, father, I shall do my best in the battle to come. She promised him. Hiashi chuckled slightly. I know you will. Hanada turned to Hanabi and gave a hug which she responded with tightly. Good luck Hanabi-chan, do your best. Hanabi smiled as she hugged her sister back. Thank you sister, make sure to do the same, I'm sure Kiba wouldn't like it if something terrible happened to you. She said causing Hinata to blush. Letting go of her sister Hinata smiled. I should go meet up with my team and Hokage-sama. She said getting nods from her family before jumping away. Hanabi turned to her father with clear worry etched on her face. Will we make it out of this? The Ashi looked down at his youngest and smiled. Of course we will, just stay positive. He said causing Hanabi to give a small smile and a nod. The Yamanaka clan compound. The Noichi and the rest of the Yamanaka clan were getting prepared to protect their clan home, while Ino was getting prepared to go meet with her team at the west gate. Be careful out there Ino, we're still not sure on just who Orochimaru has recruited. Inoichi warned to the platinum blonde. Don't worry daddy, I'm not alone out there, I have my team with me. She reassured him with a bright smile. Inoichi shook his head in amusement, even in dire situations, she could always be so calm. I know but this is Orochimaru we're talking about, we have no idea what he's capable of anymore. He explained. Ino sighed and turned serious. Daddy, I'm not a little girl anymore, if I want to become the Kinoichi Asuma-sensei wanted me to be I have to do this, and besides I doubt we'll get anyone we can't beat. She said with complete confidence. Inoichi just looked at his daughter with pride, glad to see she was taking everything serious, even if it did take for her sensei to be killed fighting Akatsuki. Did I ever tell you how proud I was of you? He said as he gave her a hug which she gladly returned. Thanks daddy. Ino said as she pulled away while wiping a few tears away. I gotta go join up with me team. Okay good luck. Her father said with a smile as she jumped away. Come back safe. He whispered. Akamichi clan compound. 
Doza had been ordering the clan round preparing the defenses for the clan compound, as well as various parts of the village, while Zhaoji was preparing to meet her team and prove to everyone he wasn't the coward he was all those years ago. Are you ready Zhaoji? His father Zhaoza asked. Yes, it's time to kick some ass. Zhaoji said as he strapped his bow staff onto his back like his father. Good, be safe out there my son and kick some odo ass. Zhaoza said with a grin. Zhaoji retuned the grin with his own. Already planned on it. He said as he turned to leave. See you later dad. He said jumping away. Good luck my son. Choza whispered before he went back to building defenses. Nara clan compound. Shikaku had just been going other all the tactics and making sure everything was perfect, while he was doing that, Shikamaru was just equipping the trench knives that he had been given by Asuma in his last moment of life. Are you ready Shikamaru? Shikaku asked his son. Yeah I guess. Shikamaru said with a sigh. I just can't believe all of this is happening so soon after the Sandame died. Shikaku also sighed but perked up. At least this time we're prepared for Orochimaru. Shikamaru chuckled. And we have Naruto with us to take care of Sasuke. He sighed as he fingered the trench knives in his pouch. I can't believe how things have changed so much in the last four years. Shikaku clasped his hand on Shikamaru's shoulder. All we have to do is make sure that we all live tomorrow and create a better future. Before anything else could be said Yoshino Nara, Shikamaru's mother rushed out of the house and grabbed Shikamaru in a hug. Be safe out there. She said as she released him. Oh and when this is all over invite Naruto Kun over, I haven't seen him since he was 12 years old. She said before rushing back into the house leaving two stunned Naras. Women. Shikaku said shaking his head. Well, I've gotta go meet my team before Ino kicks my ass. Shikamaru said shaking his head walking away leaving a chuckling father behind. Naruto and Kagura's apartment. Right now though they had just finished gotten dressed in their battle outfits, only newly modified as they realized that their old outfits were getting outdated. Naruto now wore steel tooth black combat boot, along with a pair of baggy black cargo pants with various extra pockets for scrolls, a shuriken and kunai holster, strapped to each leg, which hold his Horatian kunai, now that they are all he uses. He also had a utility belt with several pouches on it, along with scrolls for easier use. He wore a tight sleeveless black top that was made like a second skin, which shone off his muscles as clear as day, on top of that he wore a black sleeveless trench coat that had crimson fire running along the bottom much like his father's, the sleeves had been ripped off to show his bare arms, leaving the edges jagged. On the back of the trench he had the kanji for Shinku Senko, crimson flash, and gold stitching with a Yuzumaki spiral on the right and the Namika's clan crest on the left, while trench coat's collar stood up covering his neck. Around his neck was also a beautiful silver chain necklace, where it held a replica of a phoenix, along with another beautiful necklace he had received from Tsunade Senju. And last but not least Rikyun Jaka strapped to his left side in his utility belt, showing off its beauty, while also being perfectly placed for a quick draw. Kagura now dons a modified crimson halter neck top with an Amica's clan symbol across the chest and a black hoodie in the back. She also possesses a large medical pouch resting on her left hip over an ankle-length half-dress-like sash that held lightning-like strike along it, she wore fishnets around her knees and elbows, while she held a kunai strap on her bare right hip. Her beanie Akatakiyami was tied to her back secured perfect to grab with her right hand. So are you ready to kick some ass? Kagura exclaimed with a bloodthirsty grin while fiddling with a kunai. Naruto chuckled as he wiped Rikyun Jaka clean, making it spotless. The only ass I'm kicking is Sasuke's, but everyone else is free game. He said as he placed his Zanpakuto in its scabbard. Kagura smiled at Naruto with glee. You're so kind, I haven't had an opportunity to get blood reacquainted with my beautiful scythe. She said as she wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck. Naruto kissed her before realizing something, letting go of Kagura who looked at him strangely as he walked over to the sword stack he lifted a sword from it. You're going to use that, I thought you wanted more training in it first. Kagura asked. I've been training with it in my inner world for a while now, it's time I took it for a tryout. He said as he looked at the blade in fascination and remembered when he first got it. Flashback. Kusagakur. Hotel room. Naruto was laying down next to his girlfriend and possibly future wife, if rebuilding the clan was still on the list, however he could not sleep for what he didn't know, but he did feel like he was meant to be somewhere, like there was something he had to do that was important, but he couldn't figure out what it was. Just as he was about to try and get to sleep, a voice broke through his thoughts, considering it was coming from his head. Naruto we must talk right now there's something important to discuss. Rikyun Jaka said to him through his mind. Huh? What? Thus go to your inner world, I will be there. Sighing Naruto shut his eyes when all of a sudden he was knocked out. Inner world. Appearing in his inner world Naruto looked around and couldn't see anything except what was meant to be there. Rikyun Jaka, where are you? I'm here. 
he heard a voice call to him, looking at the direction he saw him standing there waiting for him to walk over. What's the problem? Naruto asked confused. There's someone you need to see. He said confusing him even more. There's someone else in my mind. He asked with a raised brow. Not exactly. All of a sudden a blackish red energy dropped down beside Rick and Jacka before it started to show a shape and when it was clear Naruto looked shocked to hell. What the hell? Standing in front of him was an identical copy of him, only everything about colors was the opposite, like he was a reflection of himself. I told you he'd react that way. His Depelgenger exclaimed in victory, while his voice seemed a little disembodied. This is you or rather I should say this is your hollow. Rick and Jacka explained sort of. By hollow? What the hell is that? What he means is, is that I'm all the negative part of you, the hate, violence, bloodlust, the lot, and eventually if you don't gain control, you'll end up killing everything and everyone you love. What? I would never do that. Yes you will Naruto. As much as I hate to admit it, but eventually you will keep all of your anger inside you bottled up until something happens and snap you lose control. Just like you do with the Kaiubi. Where is the Kaiubi anyway? The little fox shit can't get in here, this is your inner world, your Zanpakuta world so to speak. And me I'm the part that you need to control otherwise eventually the bloodlust and hate will be too much for either of us and we will be a real monster and I don't mean the little kitty story monster, I mean full on, kill whatever you want monster. If what you say is correct then how will I control it? We merge. Simple as that and don't worry about being transformed into something ugly and monstrous, you will look exactly the same. What you will gain though is a mask, this mask will allow you to use my powers freely, but only if you have trained with them, the mask usually breaks off after a certain time limit, so you need to train with that on all the time to keep it on longer. That's all I have to do? Don't treat it so easily kid. If you lose control with the mask on then all hell breaks loose, you need to train the use it longer, and also to control your urges which over time shouldn't be hard. Also you will get a new Zanpakuto. What? But I already have Rick and Jacka. Don't worry Naruto, this would be a secondary Zanpakuto, it will be the catalyst for your hollow, like I am for your powers of the Shinigami. I see this all a lot to take in. Can anyone gain a hollow side to them like you are? Naruto asked with raised brow. Yes, but only those with Zanpakutos, they must have the hate like you do, or pain of loss, grief, hell even jealousy can bring out the bad in someone. Do not forget that not everyone with Zanpakutos is good, there will be evil people with them, and they will have some sort of hollow part in them. That's why I'm offering to merge, usually I would just fight you for ownership over your body, but trying to corrupt someone who has the Kaiubi in them and retain their purish soul is a fool's job. This is the only way we can both survive, and I know you need the power, life won't be easy. Naruto thought about it for a second and had to admit to himself, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, he would be able to protect his loved ones much easier now. Very well, how do we do this then? He asked. Inner Naruto smirked and started to disintegrate from his feet. Simple, I will just become one with you. He spoke as his body turned into pure white chakra which swirled around for a second before shooting at Naruto, causing an explosion. As the smoke settled, what looked like white skin was cracking all over Naruto before it all broke as it disintegrated into nothing. Naruto gasped getting his breath back from the rush of power he had felt a second ago, and if he admitted it, it felt more powerful than ever had, he could truly see the potential for such strength. Naruto then heard a clang and looked down to see a second Zanpakuto resting on the ground. This sword was a date with a black blade instead of the normal silver. The cross guard has four prongs bent out to form the shape of the manji, which is the kanji for ban, meaning full, as in full release dot, a short length of chain with a broken link at the end dangles from the base of the hilt. Looking at the scabbard that lay next to it, he noticed that it was also black with a red ribbon charm hanging from the top of it, there were also wide intricate patterns running along both sides, which seemed to glow slightly. Picking up the sword he swung it a few times and knew that this sword was his, he could also feel the hollow energy coming from it, or more precise, his hollow energy. Picking up the scabbard he tied it to his left waist and placed his Zanpakuto into it ending with a click. As he held it all information rushed to his brain all about his Zanpakuto and this mask he is able to use as well as techniques to help with his progression in what he was now. I think we'll have a wonderful relationship Tensa Zanjetsu. You know its name already? Rick and Jaka asked in slight shock. Yup it's like it already a part of me, like I've always had it, but not been able to take a hold of it, I feel whole. Which just shows that it was truly meant for you you must come back here to develop you training every night if you want to be able to use your mask in dire situations. Also you will be able to use tenses and jetsu without your mask on, your new Zanpakuto just helps to keep the mask under control in a way. Naruto smiled and gave a nod. Thank you, for everything. He said before he left his inner world. Just after he left however a new form appeared besides Rick and Jacka it was Tensa Zanjetsu. 
he appeared to be a young man with wavy black hair that flown to one side while wearing a large black overcoat with tattered edges along the bottom and a hood attached to the back. Despite looking young he has the eyes of someone who has lived a long time, well full of wisdom as his face seems quite blank, not allowing emotions to show. I see you like your new form. Rick and Jacka commented. It is strange, I feel like a completely new person. The news and Pakuto tenses and Jetsu said. Well you are, despite you have been an inner hollow the moment you decided to become his Anpakuto, you gained a whole new identity, but even with that, should Naruto for some reason lose control, he will become what you once were, and be a mindless beast if his power is not tamed. I understand, I will do what I can to help him in the trials to come. He said as he could sense something else in the world that felt like Naruto, but different as well. Do you think we should have told him about his mother and father? Rick and Jaka asked Tensa Zanjetsu. We have no place to inform him, when they are ready for it they will, but it will only be when Naruto really needs them, I only hope that when it does happen, he doesn't attack his father. Yes, but I think Naruto will surprise us when that time comes. Rick and Jaka said with a smile, while Tensa Zanjetsu gave a nod. And flashback. Naruto had ended up telling Kagura everything about what had happened, and to his joy, she didn't see him as any different, but he had managed to control the mask for over an hour without it breaking, and learned how to use Tensa Zanjetsu without problem. Naruto's side is strapped Tensa Zanjetsu on his left side, while Rick and Jaka was on his right, it was good thing he was ambidextrous. Naruto walked up to Kagura and gave her a quick hug and a kiss. Be careful out there, Orochimaru most likely knows I'm here and you're with me, who knows what he'll do to try and get to me. He said as he gave a small but loving kiss. Hmm, you know I can take care of myself. She murmured as she settled her head on his chest, no matter what mood she was in, she always seemed to be able to relax like this. Well then, let's go love. Naruto said as he slapped her ass before leaving the apartment while a flustered Kagura soon followed after. Okage Tower. Tsunade stood in her office looking out one of her windows at the village below her, it was now empty, a barren land making it look just like Ghost Town. Not long ago they had moved everyone towards the shelters on the Hokage Mountain, while the shinobi forces all suited up for the invasion. When she took up the mantle of Hokage, she had never expected to face something like his, obviously it's not the same thing as a war, but just as bloody, especially when they're being attacked. Now though, she never realized just how much Kanoha meant to her, especially to the point in giving up her life to protect it, now she could understand how all the previous Hokages felt when they fought their last battle, and why her brother Nawaki and boyfriend Dan died for the village. She only hoped that same fate didn't happen to those she cared about this time especially Naruto. She knew how like he was to his father, giving up his life to allow everyone else to survive, just like her brother and lover, if she didn't know better, she would say they were all related somehow. Are you worried? Turning around she found Jiraiya standing with a serious look on his face. Sighing she turned back to the window. I just never expected to be facing what Siratobi sensei faced four years ago, and almost the exact same circumstances. We're stronger now, all of the rookies are Jonin level, hell we're the Sanin, and then there's Naruto's team. He said with a chuckle at the end. Tsunade chuckled at that one as well, ever since the group of five had been hanging around with each other, they had been known as Naruto's team. Strangely no one cared about Had as they honestly saw Naruto as the leader. I think when Naruto and Kagura eventually leave Kurinai, Anko and Yuga will turn missing Nin to leave with him. She said with a smile at their loyalty to Naruto. Hiraya raised an eyebrow and walked forward to stand next to Tsunade. Why would you think that? Although he had a pretty good idea why. Tsunade chuckled. He's everything they could ever want, a strong leader, full of confidence, good at inspiring people, and personal reasons, Anko has been ostracized ever since Arachimaru turned traitor, no one's ever trusted her outside of her small group of friends. The village practically treats her like she is Arachimaru, I think with Naruto, she sees a way out of her loneliness with someone who understands her better than anyone else could. Kurinai can never find someone to love because people just want her for her body, leaving her heartbroken when she realizes that she may never find someone to love. The only men who treat her with respect are Naruto, Guy, sometimes Kakashi and Asuma, but that just cut down the list. With Naruto she can find the life she always wanted, even if he has a harem to re-establish his clan. Yu Gao, ever since her ex-lover Hayate was killed four years ago, she had never smiled, barely went out with her friends and took dangerous missions. Now Naruto came back she smiled more frequently, hung around with her friends, and just seemed more laid back and relaxed, especially when she spars with Naruto. Tsunade finished with a smile at the way Naruto can touch people to get them to open up, shame she was so much older than her, even though she may not look it. Ureya nodded silently before looking at the blonde buxom woman. What would you do if they wanted to leave? Tsunade chuckled. You'll just have to see now won't you? She said as she turned to look at the door as it was knocked on. Come in. 
she ordered expecting some random shinobi when she got Gara in his full battle form. Okajama, Hirachimaru is close by now. He said in his monotone voice. Very well. Tsunade said with a sigh before heading towards the door as she turned to look at Jiraiya. You coming? We got an invasion to see to. She said causing Jiraiya to chuckle before he and Gara left the room with her. Later. North Gate. Naruto stood with Kagura, Kurinai, Anko and Yugao all in their battle outfits with a battalion of their forces behind them, ready for Sasuke and his own forces. Naruto was getting anxious, he could finally test himself against someone of Sasuke's caliber. He wasn't arrogant to believe that he could beat Sasuke easily, he knew he would have used some forbidden jutsus from Orochimaru, and if he was right then he wouldn't be an easy opponent. Where the hell are these guys? Anko muttered in white drawing some chuckles. Patience Anko, just be alert. Naruto told her which she actually took as a command. She's right. Kagura commented causing Naruto to groan. These guys are taking their sweet fucking time to actually attack. They'll be here, Sasuke's probably taking his sweet time getting here. Yuga said as she fingered her Zanpakuto on her side. You all know the plan? Naruto asked the girls. Yup. Anko said with a smirk, while the others gave a nod. Are you sure that you should face Sasuke alone? Kurinai asked worried. Yes. Naruto said with a sigh. Even he won't accept anyone else to fight, I must do this. He said before looking ahead seeing figures approaching and a flash of two red dots. They're coming, everyone get ready. He ordered everyone. Beast Gate. Tsunade, Jiraiya, Sakura, Kiba, Hinata and Shino were all stood at the gates exactly like Naruto and his team waiting for the forces to attack, which was causing them to become impatient. Tsunade and Jiraiya were worried about facing Orochimaru, not because he's strong, but because he would do anything whatsoever to get his goal done, the last time he had been in Konoha he had brought two Hokages back to life, they only hoped he won't repeat that action. The others were more anxious than anything ready to get some action, which was the cause of their adrenaline. Okajizama. Where is the Kazakiage? Sakura asked as she looked around expecting Gara around. Tsunade chuckled. Gara's following Naruto. What? Why? Kiba asked confused. Because Naruto will be fighting Sasuke and I wouldn't be surprised if Orochimaru has sent someone to intervene and take Naruto out, believe it or not, Gara is very protective of Naruto, just like a brother, but I think in some way that Gara needs Naruto. Tamari explained with a fond smile. Does Naruto-kun know he's been watched? Hinata asked with a raised brow. Well nobody's told him, we didn't really need to but if I know Naruto, he most likely already knows and understands his reasons. Jiraiya explained with a chuckle. Because even Naruto-san knows he may be in danger. Shino commentated. Yes, Naruto's not an arrogant bastard like some people, he knows when to act sensible. Jiraiya said with some pride. I still can't believe it even came to this point. Sakura said with sad sigh. Bet ready they're coming. Tsunade said causing everyone to look ahead at seeing figures. West Gate. Bakashi, Gai, Lee, Tenten, Niji, Shikamaru, Chaoji, Ino and Kankram like the at the other gates were waiting for the opponents, Kakashi was quite nervous about Kabuto, knowing he was around his level, and what's worse is that he was a medical shinobi, who knows how to take anyone down with a single strike. Gai and his team were anxious about fighting, as well as exciting, Will Gai and Lee were at least, Tenten was looking forward to fighting only to try out her new weapons, and the best way to do that is living targets, Niji just wanted to get it over and done with stop an incident like 4 years ago. Team 10 were also in the same boat as Niji as they didn't want to see anybody else die, watching Asuma die would stay with them forever, the last thing they needed was someone else to lose their lives. I wonder if anyone else has started fighting yet. Kankram said with a sigh at having to wait. I doubt it, they're probably going to strike all at the same time. Shikamaru said as he fingered the trench knives. Keep your eyes open people, we can't underestimate Kabuto, for all we know they've sent more than just Kabuto. Kakashi said. Kakashi is right everyone, do not let your guard for anything reason. Guy agreed. As long as they hurry up I don't care. Tenten muttered. You must keep positive Tenten, this will be a true test to our fighting abolites. Lee shouted enthusiastically. Do you always have to deal with that? Ino asked Tenten with a grimace while rubbing her ear. Yup. Tenten said with a nod. Quiet, they're on their way. Niji said as he used Byakugan to observe her ahead of them. It's about time. Chaoji said twirling his bow staff. But Arachimaru. Five minutes earlier. Arachimaru and his forces stood a good distance from Kanoha, so that no one could see them, on the inside he was cackling like mad at how close they were to finally destroying Kanoha. He had everything planned perfectly, he would at first go towards the east gate, knowing Tsunade and Jiraiya were placed there, where later on he would have Yubuki Kakiyoku, a survivor from when she was defeated by Team 7 on their mission to Yukigakur, to join in the battle later on. Sasuke would be charged to fight Naruto at the north gate and Teiya to fight whoever she wanted. 
He would then have Kimimuro and his hired help Raiga Kurosuki to join the battle sometime after, while Odonin fight the Konohinin. The Budo will most likely fight against Kakashi, where he would then later have Gurin sent to provide backup when their forces have weakened. It was perfect for him anyway. All right, you all know what you have to do proceed with the plan. Arachimaru ordered causing everyone to split up. Time for a reunion. He said to himself as he headed off. North Gate. In front of Naruto and his team now stood a smirking Sasu who looked like he had won the lottery or something. Beside him stood the red-haired girl who he remembered from the Sound 4, only now she was much more mature and beautiful. And with them was their own Odonin behind them with weapons drawn. As soon as Sasuke and his group had shown up, Naruto and him had been staring each other down, as if trying to get the other to falter altogether creating tension in the air. Bagura could sense the tension in the air as clear as day as Sasuke's cold black eyes seemed to pierce Naruto's almost glowing rinnegan, she just wished someone would say something. Gurunai could tell this was not the same innocent boy from when he was in the village, no the eyes he held were those of someone who was used to killing, something she hated to see, it only shown how far gone the boy was. Yugao could tell that Sasuke had gone so far into the dark that there would be no redemption for him, but even she knew even if there was, it wouldn't stop Naruto from killing him, their hatred for each other ran deeper than anything she could ever know. Anko could easily tell the young man had embraced Orochimaru's teachings from the foul odor, from the curse seal mark was planted on Sasuke's neck clear as day. Oh she can't wait for his ass to be kicked by Naruto. Aya who stood by Sasu could also feel the tension in the air and couldn't help but admire Naruto, she didn't know if it was because she had been lonely for a while or if it was just female hormones, but she couldn't help but see Naruto as a sexy and handsome man. Long time no see Sasu-chan, how's the gay life with the Rachi team going? Naruto said with a smirk while Sasuke's smirk slipped slightly. Sasu glared at Naruto tempted to use his Sharingan on the blonde. How's being banished going for you? After all you got banished because you couldn't bring little Almi back. Sasuke said with a smirk, hoping to anger the blonde who just smiled. Oh it was great, much better than being tied down to a village where most of the people there actually hate my guts. He said with a shrug angering Sasuke even further. Turning serious Naruto asked. So are we going to do this or what, I've been itching to finally kill you for four years now. Naruto explained to Sasuke's shock seeing how he hadn't expected Naruto to actually want to kill him. Even up brining me back to your Sakura Chando. Sasuke asked with a sneer. Naruto did something he never expected, he laughed. You actually think I care about that, the minute you stabbed me with a Chidori in the chest, was the minute I declared you as an enemy of everyone and everything I find precious to me, believe me you won't survive today. Naruto promised before he gripped Rikyun Jaka, now are we going to fight or what? Fine. But let's take this elsewhere where we won't be interrupted. He said vanishing into the forest. Naruto turned back to his people and gave a smile. You know what to do, I got a piece of shit to take care of. He said getting affirmatives from the girls before vanishing too. Now that Naruto-kun is gone, I can let loose. Kagura cackled madly as she hefted her scythe from her back and twirled it around before setting herself in a stance as black lightning flickered around her. I got that red head. Kurinai said. I remember her being one of the sound four, heard she had actually died to be honest, I'll make sure to finish the job. She said with a blank face. Aya smirked at the raven-haired beauty. You think you can take me? Fine let's see what you got. She shouted as she ran at Kurinai aiming a punch for her head, only for her to duck and kick her in the face, making her crash into a building wall and chasing after her. I guess that's our cue. Yugao said unsheathing her Zanpakuto causing the air around them to go cold. You bet, let's see how many I can actually kill. Anko said with a grin while holding a kunai. The guru chuckled and looked back. Well then let's go. She shouted at the end resulting in the three of them and their Konohasuna forces to charge at the Odonin to commence the carnage. Beast Gate. Orochimaru had finally come face to face with Tsunade and Jiraiya, who were prepared to fight only making him smirk as his shinobi appeared behind him. Well if it isn't my two old teammates, Tsunade and Jiraiya. Orochimaru said with a malicious end. The day you die Orochimaru. Tsunade said as she glared at him at gathering chakra in her fists. Jiraiya settled himself into a stance. I won't let you get away this time, you've done too much running you coward. He said making Orochimaru frown. I'm a coward. Saratobi sensei was a coward, and I killed him you two are cowards in your own right, Tsunade for running away from her problems and drinking from morning to night, and Jiraiya for leaving his godson to the claws of this village, even I'm not that cruel. He exclaimed making the two san and frown at having their mistakes thrown back in their faces. We may have made mistakes in our time, but at least we face them. Tsunade said with a smirk on her face. There will only be two san and remaining after today. Jiraiya said as the hokage and toad sage ran at the snake charmer. I guess that's our cue. Kiba said as he and Akamara ran at the opposing forces. 
Um Hinata we must teach these fools to not attack Kanoha Shinobi. Shino said as he started to get ready to use his bugs. Hi. She said getting into the Hayuga style stance. They won't know what hit them when I'm through with them. Tamari said with a smirk. Sakura turned to the Kanoha Shinobi behind her. That goes for you guys too, let's show them the way out. She said before they all shot forward heading into the Odo Shinobi. Just as Sakura was going to attack a voice rung out. Haimton. Tsubam Fubuki. Sakura jumped to the right as what looked like frozen bird swooped by her, turning to look at her attacker, she was surprised to see someone she thought died four years ago. Fubuki Kakiyoku. She whispered in shock. West Gate. In front of Kakashi and his forces stood the irritating medic Nin Kabuto Yakushi, who had that same smirk plastered on his face as if he's already won. Kakashi Haddock, so good to see you again. He said with a cocky smirk. Wish I could say the same to you, but I don't like slime balls like yourself. Kakashi said as he readied himself. Kakashi we will have to work together if we want to defeat him quick and easy enough. Guy said as he stood next to him. Okay but be careful, he's a tricky bastard. He told him, turning back to the others he gave them an eye smile. Do what you do best. He ordered as he, Guy and Kabuto vanished to have their battle. You heard the man, let's kick some ass. Tenten said with a sadistic smile on her face as she grabbed her large scroll. I guess it's now or never huh? Shikamaru said getting ready to use his shadow. It's our time to shine. Ino said unsheathing her tent from her back. Let's show these bastards why we're the strongest village. Chaoji said bringing his bow staff in a stance. They will know the power of youth when we are finished with these shinobi. Lee said getting in his tojutsu stance. At ready. Niji ordered as he slipped into the Hayuga stance. I finally get to use my new puppets. Kankram said with a smirk as he grabbed some scrolls. And just like that Kanoha soon met Odo to fight for their village, their freedom, its people and most of all, their home. The invasion had begun. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.